himself getting passed by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So, New off in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. The up front, they are sp getting with Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But I just want to see how Halle Alistair Haight deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. Best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari lately or something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and Approaches dropped him all the way down the order. But Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll have the slipstream down it towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Verani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is at all. Got out of line, is now Pike gonna have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off, he's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin, further down Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. And look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's just like trouble. He's touched on second and change, all of a sudden Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race. Um, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of have fun. Yeah. It's um, all about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at the enjoying himself oh watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there. Is that really bunching up now?
Coming down, Percy. Oh, he oh, 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 He's on the outside line, though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't oh, work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just like Trump. He's not just second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Me Barry's going to do it. Me Barry! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first race of this season here for what is planning to be a very interesting evening. The FTR Events Production Car Challenge, round one from BIR Grand Course. I am James Barfit. I'm going to be joined in the booth with Edward Hunter. And we've got Timon Klaus on production in the background here, bringing us all of the action what plans to be an absolute incredible evening of racing. We have got 51 cars spread across five classes. We can have a look at the car classes here. The track itself, let's get to the car classes first. Ford Mustang FF500S in yellow. Then we're going to go to the Renault Clios. They will be in blue. Toyota GR86 is in red. Global Mazda MX-5 Cup cars are in purple. And the Volkswagen Jetta TDI Cup will be in green. All very, very familiar, similar there. We are at the Grand Course. They are coming to the end of warm-up. Then we've got five minutes of lone qualifying. Then we've got the sprint qualifying race of 15 minutes. And then the feature race of one hour and 40 on a race length of 100 minutes. It's going to be incredible. And one I am looking forward to. Let's bring you up the calendar for this season as well. You can see it's BIR Grand Course opening it up. Then we're off to Lebanon for the round two. Then Ultra Park International for round three on Sunday, the 7th of April. Then we round out the season on Sunday, the 21st of April at Oshel Schleben Grand Prix Circuit. Well, I think... Ed, uh, we are going to be in for an interesting evening of racing. Yeah, lovely to see all these uh, production cars put through their paces at Virginia International Raceway and to see s such a big turnout here in all five classes, really. Everyone very, very competitive and looking to do battle tonight for the uh, opening round of the season, of course. A very, very challenging circuit here at Virginia International Raceway, the Grand West course, of course, with its 23 corners. Uh, a couple of hairpins, lots of fast flowing S sections as well. So this is really going to test the maneuverability, traction, and uh, sort of just the endurance of these drives. Of course, it's a hundred minute race, remember? So I think it's going to be a hundred minutes of absolute mayhem. I, I do have to fully agree with you. I think it is going to be quite manic here. Don't forget, guys, as well, thank you to Go For The Gap, who are sponsoring the, 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 this season's calendar. You can have a look down in the links below, and you will be able to find their Etsy store. There's also a Discord to the FDR events. There's um, a website to obviously JBB on there as well, so don't forget to have a look through all of them ones. Don't forget, like, subscribe, turn on the bells, and do all that fancy jazz that you can do for completely free on YouTube. Now... The interesting thing for me, I was looking through the brake horsepowers early on, and obviously we start off with the Mustang. 325 brake horsepower. They're likely to be lapping the Jettas, and the, the reason I say that is between the Jettas and the MX-5s are the, probably the ones with the lowest. So if we're going to go down in order, we've got the Mustang first, then the GR20, the GR86 on 228 brake horsepower, then we've got the Renault Clios on 200 brake horsepower. Believe it or not, they've actually got more power than the MX-5s on 181. And then the poor old little old Jetta's coming up at the back on 168 brake horsepower. So not a massive difference between the middle classes, but the Mustang's running away with it with his 325. Yeah, certainly uh, you're going to see, especially down the straights, the Mustang and the Toyotas sort of fly away from the uh, other three classes. But uh, uh, with, when we get into all the twisty technical stuff, expect uh, the uh, the Renaults, your, Jet, your VW Jettas and your Mazdas, of course, to really be uh, coming to their own a little bit more. Uh, so yeah. it's not going to be quite uh, as big a walkover, I think, as, as you're suggesting, but certainly 
everyone's going to be worried about their own cars and their own classes more than uh, each other and mainly just staying out of each other's races when we see this interclass uh, or outer class rather i should say uh, lapping attempts yeah i think so i think overtaking is gonna be vitally important now let's bring you here with the cars and class structure okay so fuel situation is this the, the mustangs will have 30 percent fuel okay the clios will have 37 the gr86s will have 28 the mazdas will have 32 and the vw jetters will have 11 percent of fuel so yeah you know that's going to be an interesting one for them as well scoring system they will be scored by class and it will be first we'll get 25 then you'll go down to 18 15 12 10 and that's down into fifth position six will get eight seven will get six and five four three two one for the 12 obviously that's counting on the fact that we are going to have 60 cars 12 drivers per class uh, 12 times 5 is 60 and even I can do the maths on a Sunday evening there as well so hopefully you all can at home as you see the speed of this car that is a George Gruber currently on the on the racetrack there doing this tattling battling this very tough circuit 23 cars to battle with Edward you know it's got a bit of everything fast flowing it's got hairpins it's got a very interesting turn 13 name you know, it's just got a bit of everything, hasn't it? It does, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's a great opener because it's really going to be uh, representative of what we might see uh, other tracks uh, for the rest of the season, of course. And plenty of challenges to catch these uh, drivers out on, on their qualifying laps then as we uh, see the uh, everyone sitting up for their opening runs. This is Chris Sewell in the uh, MX-5 Cup uh, 2016 car, of course, number 411. And so the MX-5... Uh, definitely going to be a little bit twitchy into some of these uh, entries, but it's got a uh, but it is actually a fairly stable car from what I've heard about the MX-5. So we should see some. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, who uh, gets the upper hand then in each class uh, on the first runs, because that's really going to be the bank of laps that dictate what we see in the rest of the session. Yeah, I think that's what they've got to be careful for. That's what they've got to look out for as well. Don't forget here. There, there's multi-class okay so be aware there is going to be at any point 52 i think we've got in the session on the racetrack 52 cars from different series going to be uh, a lot we should point out james that this is a private qualifying session so they're not going to run each to each other on the quality laps if you look at austin tucker just about to get started in his Mustang. Uh, lovely livery on that. Looks a bit like, uh, ooh, sort of like, I was going to say uh, panther skin, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, not sure quite what is, he's gone for it? here. I'm not really sure if it is panther skin, does it? Uh, it? It seems to be going for something of that variety, yeah. I was going to, I was also going to, my second guess was going to be breakfast cereal, but <laughs> I, I doubt it was going to be that. Nice. <laughs> Austin Tucker with his Weedos liveried machine. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Here as well, as he's starting off on this racetrack, it's going to be insane. This course is, well, it's going to be very hard. I think that the longer the course, the better this series will um, sort of portray itself. With the amount of cars that they've got, they need to have this longer circuit because at the end of the day, it's they need that area to spread out, right? And they've got to make sure that they are going to be able to um, get this correct because it's not going to be very easy. These drivers are going to have to be on high alert all the time. That middle classes, the MX-5s, the Clios, the Jettas, they've all got to be aware that there's faster classes behind them. They've all got to be aware that they're going to have Mustangs coming through. They're probably going to have GR86s trying to come through. And then you might have, if there's a Jetta driver who's quicker than an MX-5 driver, which wouldn't surprise me that there would be, if it is, would be the case, because the likes of Jake Cranstone's in here as well. I know Jake, he's a very speedy driver in the Jettas. Okay, so we, we can keep a lookout for uh, Jake on that one. Eric Manafeld's here. He's in the VW Jetta as well. So these Clio drivers, they're not going to have it all their own way. No, certainly not. And uh, you are going to see a little bit of mix. The, the other thing that you, we've inevitably got to think about come the race is that it's a bit of a toss-up between 
drivers fighting their own battles, trying to win their class and not lose time when they're being lapped by the faster classes. So you will see people uh, trying to take advantage, trying to tuck in right behind a car from a different class. Like if you're, at, say, in a VW Jetta and a Mustang comes through the lap, you might see the VW slot behind the Mustang just waiting their turn for the other VW Jettas to just move out of the way and try and slot through opportunistically. So uh, uh, you'll see who's got the good racecraft and uh, who is uh, a little bit uh, not looking in the mirrors and maybe gets caught out by an mm. unlucky being lapped in exactly the wrong place, but potentially. I do love Ruby. She's coming to YouTube chat. Why are they driving so slow? They haven't got a lot of horsepower. They're production Ruby, cars. To be honest, um, they're, they're probably going max speed at the moment, which isn't very fast at all. They go, I think the Clio tops out, I think it's about 160, give or take. Not in, Probably not even actually. I think it's about 140. The Mustang is probably the fastest one but, yeah, they haven't got a lot of power, um, Ruby. So it, what may look slow to you, it is not to them. I'm just pointing that out, all right? They're, they're probably going as fast as they can go in the cars that they've got there, as we can just see Sven go off the side, unfortunately, off the side of the circuit. That is coming round 4A before he goes into 4B, 5A, 5B, 6A and 6B through the snake section. He's actually pulled over and called it a day there. We jumped on board with David Johnson. Um, who uh, I think that's actually Johansson, so my bad on that one. As he goes through the snake section here as well, he's going to go left, right, and try and straighten it up as best as he can. On to Andrew Sharp, fastest lap up for 250 in the GR86s. So a great job from Andrew Sharp. He's not running very far away from Johansson in the Clio. So this is what we were talking about with faster drivers of one class going as fast as the others. Yes, exactly. So uh, the similar pace uh, is going to be uh, really coming to play in the race, especially uh, if you look at the uh, GR86s compared to the fastest uh, Mazda time from uh, Tim and Jay Bramley. We're looking at at the moment 250.8, uh, whereas, uh, as you were saying, uh, Andrew J. Sharp 250.3. So that's only a couple of uh, only a few tenths behind, which uh, may not sound like a lot, but when these classes bunch together, that could uh, that could really become crucial. So it's, it's clear that they've got different strengths in different sectors, these two cars. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of things oh. happening. Oh, as Miguel Torres goes and puts it into the tyre barrier for Miguel. Good night, Vienna. Into the pits he goes, and unfortunately for Torres, uh, that's not ideal. Not so, enough time to get out again, I don't think. And no, he's not. He's not even going to have nowhere near enough time. Damon Mitchell in the Clio is currently out here. Poor Damon Mitchell. There you go. You can see Ruby on the bottom. They're going about 96 miles an hour. He's coming round the final few parts of the circuit through the roller coaster. He's going to go 21. Then he's going to go down to, into 22. He's going to drop down the hill again. Now down into the hook pen, the right-hander. Now we start the long start, finish straight. And you'll see the speed. I do believe it's round about, topping out about 120, that 25, if I'm not mistaken. If that, that's a push there in the Renault Clio. So, yeah, unfortunately, Ruby, they're not GTPs or GT3s. Uh, they, they haven't gone for them classes. So, uh, yeah, you can't see that. Oh, two great laps, uh... Uh, we just saw uh, a new pole, I think a new pole sitter in uh, the Mustang class, at Kevin Parrish, 245.5, uh, which is a tenth quicker than Sven Demmel, who was holding mm. on to pole position before then. So 30 seconds to go. Everyone's uh, putting in their last gasp efforts. And uh, especially, like you say, in those in the VW Jetta and in the Clio, it's all about momentum through a lot of those S-bends and the twisty yeah, they, stuff. That, that's the thing. They've got to keep it. They've got to keep it going, you know, and they've got to make sure that they can keep the speed up. Here, uh, David Johannesson is still out on circuit, but then again, he's not going to have enough time to complete it. He is up round turn three, round NASCAR bend. He's not going to have a ton enough time to complete that lap. He's going to be nowhere near, I think. Andy Fox, nope, he's another one on the front side of the circuit. Chris Rowe is in the pits, and that is the end of qualifying. So let's bring you up the grid. Here is... The starting grid, Kevin Parrish is in first with Sven Demmel, Sven Demmel in second. Then we've got Chase Brown in third. Miguel Torres in fourth. George Gruber fifth. And Mickey Frinson is in sixth place. On from that is Jeff, Jeff Andres, then Ron Wolf, Emerson Gualdin, Andrew Sharp, David Johansson, and Giovanni Romano.
on from that one, Tyler Augustino, then Timon Bram, Bramley, Marcus Law, Adam Schwartz and Truber, Richard Crow, uh, Corfor, Damon Mitchell in 18th. On from there, Harry Fox, Dustin Delano, uh, Delano, Ryan Chevrolet, Tim Classens, Colin Weiss, Richard Rosado down in 24th. Then Gary Brown, Neil Rocks, Lincoln Fox, Jules Verstratton, Martin Pearson, Brooks Clayton in 30th. A um, Akram Zamoni, Eduardo Aguirre, Patrick Reed, Eric Manifeld, Jake Cranston in the jet, and Logan Warfield in the MX5 in 36th. Then we go Chris Sol, <laughs> Andy Fox, Christopher Rowe, Daniel Downing, uh, Carl Smith, and Chris Zoffer. Carl uh, Ridley, Steve Burns, uh, uh, Jeremy Agard, Duncan Murray, Jesus Armandari, Sam Van Olst in 48th. Oh, there we've got the MX5 of Alex Marsh, Matt Cripland in the Cleos, Justin Michaela in the 86th, and then Austin Tucker in that Mustang. I'll tell you what. Austin is going to have a very interesting job coming through the field from the back of this field. Here they are on rolling starts. I was hoping they might have been in class order. I thought they might have put them in class starts so that we haven't got a mix up. So they go classes. But clearly, by the looks of it, we're going full on mixing the pot, stirring the cake. Have we haven't even gone anywhere? <laughs> Well, they, 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 they wouldn't like to make it too easy for his first no. time out, would they, James? <laughs> why, 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 would they? <laughs> why put it in classes for the comms boys? They'll be all right. We'll just mix everyone up. Yeah, so, but if, you're a, uh, <laughs> if you've just put in a giant killing lap in like a VW Jetta and got like fifth on the grid overall, and then you start like, I don't know, <laughs> 30th on the grid, you might feel a little bit put out. So I can sort of see why they've done that. No, no. Um, I don't to be honest but you know hey don't let's not start any dramas already but um yeah this <laughs> yeah this is gonna be very very interesting guys as well so please sit back grab your popcorn and enjoy yourself that's all you've got to do here andrew sharp is leading the way in the gr86 and then we've got tim and bradley in the purple that's on the mx5s and then behind that, I believe it, is it Manifeld in the Clios, if I'm not mistaken? Jetta. Uh, in the Manifeld in the Jettas, sorry. And then, obviously, um, who we got in the Clios in the lead at the moment? It's David Johansson. David Johansson is there as well. So uh, get ready for this one. We're going to have the Mustangs going off first on board with Kevin Parrish. They've got a long, long lap, mind you. They are coming around 888B down, down into South Bend, which is turn 10. Yes, I know. We've got A's and B's and A's and B's and A's and B's. But don't forget, like, subscribe, turn on the bells. Ferrera 360. Hi, all. Hello, mate. Come on, Jelly, he said. And Luca Pitti, let's go chase there. So, but great job from all of these guys. I think we could safely say to score points, you've got to survive. Am I, I, I going to put that right? I don't think that's a controversial thing to say, James. Uh, but especially these opening few laps when everyone is so bunched together and you've got the mix up in some of the classes as well. You don't want to get taken out in someone else's race. It is a case of survive especially if you're going down the straights you don't want to get in the way of any of these mustangs as well so you don't want uh, to have two clears going too wide when a, you've got a toyota or a mustang right behind them as well so hopefully everyone is quite sensible and uh, most of the mustangs at the very very front here have got uh, the front to themselves once that safety car pulls in of course so we'll, we yeah, should well, see a fairly clean <laughs> run up front behind i think it's anyone to go yeah austin tucker in the in the mustang down in 48 um he's going to have an interesting job <laughs> this will require <laughs> restraint from austin <laughs> um yeah that's going to be an interesting one for austin tucker down at the back there as we're looking from the back end of the pace car so looking backwards down towards kevin parish and sven demel as these guys are now in 15a and 15b into the spiral so they've still got a bit of time here as well looks like we've got matty cridland in the pit still he's the last of the runners in 50 second how would you handle this as a as a pace lap edward how would you handle the start here 
Well, you've got to make sure initially, of course, you've got the brakes and tyres in the uh, optimal temperatures so you don't get caught out. It's so easy to either uh, overheat the brakes uh, by uh, pressing the, that other pedal way too much or you can uh, end up being caught out on cold tyres and then you just don't have the grip once the race gets underway. It might take like half a lap or so before you're you know, properly up to temperatures or so. So you, you really want to make sure you don't get caught out. And uh, especially if you're at the front, you, you've only, you can only go so quickly because the safety car dictates the pace of the field here. And uh, yeah, so there's, there's certainly a lot to think about, even though the race hasn't quite got underway yet. But uh, the longer, of course, you stay behind that safety car, the more the tension builds. And the more, especially if you're up front in the form of Kevin Parrish, Kevin Parrish, so you really want to get this thing underway as soon as possible. So you can just focus on running out front and trying to build a gap behind you, which I'm sure Sven Demmel will be very, very keen to prevent happening. There we go, safety car. Yeah, we're gonna be up and running now as well. Kevin Parrish, Sven Demmel on this run down into turn one. It's a tight horseshoe right-hander. Kevin Parrish green leads flag, us away flag, here flag. once more. And it is Parrish, it is Demmel, it is Brown, it is Torres. Everybody's got away at the moment cleanly. No real dramas, Justin Delano there fighting his way. But up front, Kevin Parrish takes the whole shot. Sven Demmel, Chase Brown alongside each other with Miguel Torres. Torres is the only one that's gained a position in the top nine. There's been a drama down at the back end of the field here as well. It looks like Colin Weiss, Andrew Swatson Grura has all had a fight. Two wide through the S's further back. But at the moment, Kevin Parrish makes an absolute barnstorming start. He takes the whole shot and is leading the race currently. Yeah, Neil Rocks and the Clio just got absolutely knocked wide by some of the big classes there at the first corner there. So it, uh, that's not necessarily a disaster. He's still going down in eighth. Uh, but like you say, survival is real key, uh, especially if you're in one of the smaller classes that's uh, punched above its weight as we see George Gruber making a lovely move into the S's there as they uh, start the uh, into the middle sector here. Yeah, that's the thing. They're all very getting quite far away from uh, David Johannesson, who's in the first of the Clios. He's the first of the driver behind the back end of the Mustangs, and he's sitting in 10th place. Now, he's going to be losing time, which is, should be expected from these Mustangs. These Mustangs should be able to get away from David Johannesson. He's in front of Andrew Sharp and Giovanni Romano. Uh, so that's that battle going on. We're going to start seeing a little bit of a spread, but we have got 15 minutes here for them first. They have got a 15 minute race here as Chris Sewell has had a little bit of a drama further down. It looks like he's gone off the side of the circuit, unfortunately. And he is, he's in that MX-5, he's on the grass. Looks like he's just come round the oak tree for Chris Sewell there. But Andy Fox fighting it out in 10th place here. And he's having a good old ding dong further in the middle of the pack. It was how we expected it to be complete and utter chaos. Martin Pearson's dropping down the order. He's had a little bit of a drama, I think, as well. There were some incidents going on with Austin Tucker, Ricardo Rosado as well. And it's all gone a little bit peak tongue for some of these guys, but for some of them, they're still running. And up front here is Parrish still leading the way. Sven Devil in second and Miguel Torres third and George Gruber in fourth at their action, action, action here, Edward, all the way through the field. Yep, and a great start for uh, Jake Cranston, by the way, in the VW Jetta Cup because he's passed Eric Manteveld, uh, who I think started off all the he's going to definitely qualified in second, and he's made a brilliant start to take the uh, class lead there. He's got an MX-5 in front of him, and it's a little bit of a mixed up class here, so uh, this has uh, worked perfectly for Jake and uh, Eric Manteveld. It's certainly going to be one to fight back. And he's 13 seconds ahead of Dan Downing, who's the next car in that class. Yeah, Eric Manavell there with Jake Cranston first and second. It's Pedro Aguirre in front. We're looking back for, uh, looking forward, sorry, from Sven Demmel's car. We'll see how much pace he gets as he's going down through turn three and four into NASCAR Bend. He goes the left-hander. Then it's going to be down through left hook, which is a 4A and 4B and it's going to be very interesting development peering out behind it on from Jan for Stratton there is lots of people gathered up there Stratton down in 23rd at the moment and there's lots of action behind that it's going quite crazy further back Ben Stratton there in 23rd place he's got Akron Zamoni right behind him in the grey machine as these guys battling it out once more on their run through turn 4A and 4B before he goes off through the snake session. This is battles of the Cleos. Chase Ooh. Brown here is in the battle of the Mustangs. It's the beasts in the cars. 
alongside Edward Guardin and here and it looks like Guardin is in ninth on the right hand side I believe Chase Brown's on the left in the number eight machine and Emerson Guardin in the green there doing still side by side mind you as they're coming through Oak Tree and on that run down into turn 13 which is actually named a bitch there so <laughs> turn 13 is the bitch corner that's not me swearing guys that is actually on a track map of VIR don't believe me go and have a look Emerson Guardin making the move before they get down into turn 13 with Chase Brown behind him so great action there from these guys Marcus Law down in 15 he's also wrapped in a multi-class battle of a GR86 uh, he's got a Mazda behind him and Cleo sat in the middle but that is Akram Zamoni on the screen there currently and he's doing a great job here he's just got a little bit too hot at the moment and it's going to have to try and recover once more. So a lot of action here and well done to um, Cloud, uh, Team Ones in the background who's trying to keep up with it all over this short sprint race here. And it's Daniel Downing now in the Jetta. He's sitting in third with Steve Burns, I believe. Is that a Mustang starting to come through there? Is that Austin Tucker? He's trying to recover over the it back is. end of Steve Burns. He's up 17, mind you. So not bad at all, considering they're only on lap two. Yep, certainly he needs to make this progress early on while they're all bunched together, because that will be uh, an easier way to do it. But it's also very, very risky, uh, because when they're all bunched together, that's when the accidents and the contact is more likely to happen. Uh, Chase Brown, by the way, he didn't just get overtaken by Gordon, he got overtaken by Andres and Wolf, so he must have made a big error, which left him very, very vulnerable. Gowding just went round the outside of him, I think, oh. at the final corner. Oh. Is Belled. Oh, getting very very close to uh, the VW Jetta in front of him yeah Eric Menevel there coming through the roller coaster in through 21 now coming Cranston, through the hog so great Cranston on the track with Menevel oh, there so it's an MX5 action. there's been somebody spun behind I think that's Lincoln Fox Lincoln Fox is unfortunately gone off and Carl Ridley is still oh. Oh, Lincoln Fox is out of whoa he's crashed on the way to the pit lane oh dear <laughs> so is that Steve coming Burns? a little bit too hot there Stevie Burns has crashed on the way in to the pit lane. He you has. wait till I'll speak to him. What have you been up to, dear sir? How did you manage that one? Let me yeah. see if we can have another look back. It didn't even show up that he's had an incident. It's just shown him that Steve Burton has gone into the pit lane. Oh, he was hit. He was hit. It wasn't even on his own. There was contact for Steve Burns. Ooh, and we've got a battle while this is going on for the class lead in the Ford Mustang FR 500s because Seven Demel is trying to go around the outside of Kevin Parrish then as they are about to cross the start finish straight any moment now. But Sven Demel is going to be able to take the lead then. So uh, that was a, a good move there, set himself up well. But look at Kevin Parrish, still there, but he's going to be stranded on the outside then. And Miguel Torres just watches on in that uh, pink and gray car in a great interest then in the third in-class machine. So uh, Kevin Parrish then really having to fight back here. That was Alex King who sent Steve Burns into the pit lane. There was contact coming down the straight and that's why Steve Burns went in and shot into the pit lane. But Parrish here has uh, got Sven Bemmel for company once again. These guys battling off coming through turn 17B as Sven trying to make it through Kevin Powers. You can see Andrew Sharp's leading the GR86s by about four seconds. David Johansson leading the Clio's by about 1.1. That is the uh, Mustangs on, the, on the, your left-hand side there. So you can see where the Mustangs are. You can see the battle here with Kevin Powers and Sven Gemmel. And then we're down into J David Johansson in the Clio. He's got a bow. 1.5 over Romano currently. So David Johansson keeping a great pace up at the moment. I can tell you where one class battle is, and that's down in the Jeddahs. Jake Cranston, Eric Manneveld, and Dan Downing are not very far apart, and they're really still keeping this going. And these battles down in the little Jeddahs there, and Dan Downing, unfortunately for Dan, he's got the very Brooks Clayton in the GR86 trying to push him along. And unfortunately for Dan, he's going to have to try and break away from that GR86 if he can. Because Ooh. we know the GR86 got more power here, Edward. That's the thing, isn't it? At the moment, they've got, you know, the GR86 is more powerful than the the Jetta, the Clio, the, the, the Toyota. They're all there. They've all got 
more power than the poor little Jetta at the bottom. Yeah, and also Dan Downing has uh, somehow found a way through past Eric Mantinveld. So this is uh, given a small lead to Jake Cranston. But look at this, the Mustangs still dueling away, Demol and Parrish then. The so Parrish now really has to sort of get defensive, uh, I, which, which is slightly going to compromise some of his exits if he's not careful here, if he misjudges this. And the more he backs Demol, the more Torres starts to creep into this battle with uh, just five and a half minutes left in this first heat. Yeah, looks like Manabel made a mistake around the last couple of corners off through the roller coaster there. Parrish now in that Mustang. Then Mustangs are absolutely incredible. But boy, oh boy, do they not like turning corners. That's all I'm going to say on that one. The Mustang is like driving a house brick on wheels with hardly any downforce on it there as well. Good evening, Phil, across the pond. Good evening, Sir Dreisen. It's where I managed to get my Clio on its roof in 15A. Yes, you did. Well done, you. <laughs> my, my son coming into YouTube chat telling me, Dad, I rubbed my Clio at that very corner. So, yes, you did, dear sir. As you can see on the screen at the moment, Justin Delano once again in that Toyota battling away here with he's got Harry Fox in front of him and Ryan Chevalier behind in what's that 18 19 20th third fourth and fifth in class mind you so a great job from these guys Ryan Chevalier and Damon Mitchell has almost just swapped positions Delano's behind he'd be able to see them behind them battling away Delano's got his own problems of Fox currently and Delano trying to get away from Harry Fox not an ideal scenario. They're on the run through 15A and through 16. Round the left hand of 16 on the run up into 17A and B here. Harry Fox, Ty Augustino, and uh, Justin Delano. That is a mid pack scrap. There's Cleo's in front, Tim Cleason's and Marcus Law. They're doing a great job, but Parrish is under pressure again up front. End. Yeah, uh, <laughs> given Parrish is just really having to drive on those wing mirrors because Sven Demel. Uh, it's just looking absolutely relentless at the moment is the uh, the German Swiss driver. And uh, if he, there's any little opening, potentially he might have to make a move around the outside here. <laughs> yeah, but oh, he's going to try and switch back here. That's oh. brilliant from Sven Demmel. And nothing Kevin Parrish, the American, can do nope. to hold him at bay then. So Sven Demmel takes the lead of the Mustang class. Yeah, he does. Coming into the last three minutes, that's going to be this one and probably one more being that the Mustangs are getting around on 245s so there should be one more after this and there's even a battle at the back of the Mustangs as Guardian and Brown are still swapping places further back the Clio's is pretty much wrapped up David Johannesson taking the lead there the GR86 is led by Sharp he's pretty much clear from the nearest GR86 that's Tyler Augustino that's five seconds down the road uh, so that's pretty much wrapped up there as well. Akram Zamoni, he has got Yuzeli uh, Vastaratan in front of him, and they're not very far apart currently, separated by about two temps. You can see them on your screen here as these guys go running off through NASCAR bend into left hook, 4A, 4B. Now they'll be going far right as well. Zamoni doing a stellar job around the left hand or the left hook. Now he's got to go right through 4A, now through 5A. Is he going to be able to get the drive out? He's not going to hit the drive before they go through the snake. He's now going to have to stay right the way behind him, all the way down into the oak tree, see if he can make a mistake down there in the oak tree and get through but it's very very hard for Zanoni to do that yeah the straight and locked up there and that was what allowed Zanoni to just get so close to the rear bumper there uh, luckily he didn't make contact but you saw from the rear camera from the Stratton just how tightly he bunched in he was he goes right to the inside there and almost a little bit onto the grass and this creates a little opportunity for Akram Zanoni Rocket to just try and set him up for the, the uh, penultimate corner here. Yeah, he's going to have to try and get him down into 13. However, it's a sharp right hand. Oh, I'll keep an eye on that one in the background. Parrish and Demo still scrapping away once again. They're on the run through 18 and 18B. So great little actions taking place. Van Stratton is still holding back Zamoni as they're coming around 13. We've got Parrish and Demo. They're How's coming Parrish got back ahead? Now. He's just yeah, he's <laughs> unstoppable. He's relentless relentless he's never going to give it up is he yes and look at torres he's really joining this battle now with just 90 seconds left to go in this heat could he snatch it from both of them well 
Never say never. Never say never. Torres stayed with them. They've opened up about a six-second gap to George Gruber and Mickey Fryson with Jeff Andrews and Ron Wolf behind them. Don't forget, guys, we have got a five-minute warm-up, and then we've got an hour and 40 minutes here. This is how Parrish cleared Demo. Demo went in a little bit too hot. Parrish is going to take that inside line, and there's nothing Demo can do. He's just got to give it up and got to make it through. So great job from the um, Demo and Parrish. Something Chris else just Brown. happened, James. Giovanni Romano is taking the Clio lead from uh, David Johansson. Oh, uh, Johansson's been off the side of the circuit. Oh, oh yeah, Hansen. He overcooked it, locked up the cut, the tires on that Clio, and unfortunately they lost the position. You see it here, smoke coming out. There goes Johansson now. That's going to allow Verstappen. Ah, that's no, it's going to allow Romano. Sorry, through on him, and oh, he manages to hang on to second with David Johansson with Marcus Law in third. He's got Timon Clatton behind him. He's got Tyler Augustino in the Toyota GR86 behind him. So, yeah, action, action, action happening. And one of the interesting things is, just to show you how much action there is, if you go down to 33rd in Alex King, you have got an MX-5, a Jetta, and a GR86 here, as we can see the replay of what, there's going to be contact on the exit. He's going to spin it round, unfortunately. Not a good idea, unfortunately, for Harry Fox there. But yeah, down in 33rd place with Alex King, there's Clayton Pearson down in a Manivelle, and there's a big old group of cars down there. That, that's quite an interesting one as we can focus on Parish Devil here once more for the final lap of the race as these guys are on their way round turn 15 and 15B. But there's all the battle down the back end. It, it's so fascinating to see all of these classes together. Kings in the Mazda, Clayton's in the GR86, is down in the Jetta, Manifeld in the Jetta, and Carl Ridley's in the Jetta as well. So great action all the way through. But Kevin Parrish holding on now, and he's coming through 17B. Yep, so not many opportunities left for Sven Demel, nor for Eric Mantenbell to try and uh, outfox Dan down in, in that battle for second in the VW Jettas. But yeah, look at Kevin Parrish, just absolutely driving on the wing mirrors. And it uh, looks like he is going to be triumphant in this heat if he can just hang on for just a few corners more. Yeah, this is coming down now. These guys have got one more corner. One more corner. The hog pen. The hog pen. And it's going to be Parrish. Is he going to hang on? Is Demo going to get the drive? Is he going to try and cut him into the inside? He's not. Demo's got nowhere to go. It's a long run down. It's a long run. Come on, Parrish. Where are you? There it is as Kevin Parrish comes over the line in the Mustang there. And the interesting thing about the Mustang finishing is Giovanni Romano is going to take 10th overall and it's going to win the Clio classes. So for Romano, a stellar job taking that Clio victory with David Johansson behind him. So Johansson in 11th overall, second in class. Then we've got Andrew Sharp. He's in the MX-5s. So Sharps in the MX-5, he's going to take the top three there. So great job from him. Uh, the Toyota, okay. James. Sorry? He's just won the Toyota class, not the MX-5. Toyota class, Andrew. sorry. What did I say? He said MX-5. That's oh, been won by Tim yeah. and Jay Bramley at the moment. You're hearing it's five things. seconds out of Richard Gorefour. Yeah, that's the one. So there we go. Um, but that's the easy race, right? It didn't look easy <laughs> for any of it out no. there as Transfin wins VW Jetta Cup class. Mm. Eric Mantenveld still about four tenths behind Dan Downing. There they are. So Dan has held on. Lucky for him. Yeah, just trying to get these. Um, Delano taking the victory there, uh, third in the MX5s. Uh, we've got. Uh, right, there are oh, yeah, Heat 1. Results, Kevin Parrish is your winner with Sven Demel in second, Miguel Torres in third, George Gruber finishes fourth, and then Mickey Frenson in fifth, Jeff Andres in sixth, and then behind that, Ron Wolf in seventh, and Emerson Gowden in eighth, then Chase Brown behind that one. Yeah, they are your winners in that class, Giovanni Romano. He takes the win as well in the Clio's with David Johansson. And that's Adam Schwarzenberger there 
uh, there's Giovanni Romano, David Johannesson, and Marcus Law behind that one. So great action from all of these guys as Andrew Sharp, Tyler Augustino, Jason Delano, Harry Fox um, there with Adam Schwarzendruber behind that as well. So, yeah, great job from them guys. And then we've got Timon Bradley, Richard Corfor, Eduardo Aguero, Colin Weiss, and Alex King in the MX5s. In the Toyota GR86s there. Uh, in the Jettas, sorry. Jay Cranston, Daniel Downing, Eric Manafeld. Uh, on the chain third, we've got Ridley, Jermaine Agard, Andy Fox, and Duncan Murray. We've got a bit of time before the warm-up there. So a stellar job from them guys as well down in the Jetters. Right. Yeah, we'll have a quick look back at some of the action that went on. And, well, there was quite a lot of it, Ed. Yeah, certainly was. Uh, battles for the lead in uh, all five classes as well, really. Uh, that wasn't really... Uh, maybe Timon J. Bramley had it to himself in the Masters as we look further back. This is Pearson being Ooh. spun around on the opening lap by one of the Toyota GR86s there. So that was the multi-class madness. It didn't quite work out for Martin Pearson. Here's Justin Michaela, though. Oh, oh he's got that Cutting one. Cutting the track at uh, that, uh, 12 or 13 there. He's done that. <laughs> Yeah, that was just before the race. That was just before the same corner, wasn't it, that you saw the, uh, Martin Pearson did some Andy Fox there. Going, trying to go side by side. Unfortunately, not ideal. Martin Pearson again being caught up in another incident. Oh, oh. hit on the jetters. Yeah, around he goes. I think that's actually downing there. And then for good health, the GR86 comes in. That's the same GR86 that hit him earlier. <laughs> Probably, yeah. As Lincoln Fox in the MX-5, he gets it all a little bit out of shape. It's, oh, he buries himself. Yowza. It looks like it's a cooked fox, sadly, for him. And I think, oh, there was, it was Rosado who's just spun it in the background behind him. So he was the pink and white uh, GR86 we saw in trouble earlier as well. Yeah. And now we've got Brooks Clayton. It's going to be well too close to that Jenna. Well too close. Can't get that close coming through turn 13. Jetta's got nowhere to go. Lincoln Fox in that MX-5 cup car. Just stops on the side of the circuit for Lincoln Fox. Harry Fox. This is what we watched earlier on with the contact and then he spins. That's coming out of 13 as well, Edward. Yeah, shame for Harry Fox. He was fighting for the podium before that happened. So that really cost the British driver. Yeah, it definitely did. And Ryan Chevalier in the GR86. What has he got up to? Looks like all on his own. That car's going to come round. That back end's going to come round at some point. Here we go. On, oh, he's going to fight it. For, hold it, hold it, hold it if he can. Little bit gets on. Manages to keep hold of it there. It's a great job from Ryan Chevalier. As we get back on board with Ryan, he obviously did something, didn't he? That's the thing. Jeremy Agard in the VW Jetta. That's coming out of turn 13. Over the, the inside curve he goes as he's fighting along with Agard in the Jetta. So, great job from Jetta. And then Austin Tucker in the Mustang. He was trying to come through the order, wasn't he? How far did Austin actually get on that one? I can't remember what, what, um, how many places he gained. So, uh, I think yeah. he got to 8th or 7th in class, I think, because there was a little bit of chaos ahead of him. Mm -hmm. I do like it how you put little bit. <laughs> I do like to undersell it sometimes, yes. <laughs> but, yes, there was a little bit of chaos here on the racetrack of VIR. Um, <laughs> typical British understatement, yes. Yes. I'm not sure Austin would uh, appreciate more, it. More, <laughs> more like there was complete and utter chaos over 10 minutes, now you're over 15 minutes, now you're going to sit and watch it for an hour and 40. So good luck for that one. Let's see how that one pans out. But yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see how this is going to go. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. so I, I assume this is going to be... Is this another heat or is it the final? I'm, I've lost track it's, of where it's we are. It's the main feature race now, feature, the hour yes, four. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the, uh, this is going to be a longer race then and it's going to be interesting to see who gets... <laughs> whether we see more... We're probably almost certainly going to see more chaos. But uh, whether it's going to be uh, people up front getting desperate, trying uh, crazy moves early on, or whether it's going to be just more multi-class madness. Sorry, I, I do love the fact that you speak like there's going to be anything different. <laughs> well, oh, we'll show, we'll show a little bit of multi... We can't pretend we know the future. Yeah, yes. we're going to show a little bit of multi-class madness. <laughs> um, 
made, uh, yeah, chaotic chaos. Let's just be, uh, well, that's the way you're going to put it. Chaos just, by its very nature is chaotic, James. I don't think, it kind of goes without saying. <laughs> it's a double entendre. Or whatever That's the word what is. a double entendre is. Uh, oh, I don't know. That's but what you said about uh, a double entendre is what you said about uh, turn 14, I think it was. <laughs> but, <laughs> Wikipedia <laughs> never lies. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if it's on the race, what am I supposed to do if they put a corner name like that on the racetrack? They probably voted for it uh, unanimously yeah, in Virginia. Um, probably. <laughs> but good job from them. That is the end of all of here as well. Don't forget to say hi, guys. We won't bite. We do speak back. And thank you so much for welcoming. If you do have a favorite driver, hashtag whoever the driver may be, as we're just about to grid up for the next race. And, well, hold on to your hats here. We'll get the grid up on your screen very, very shortly. And we'll run you through a, um, the order once again. Right. Whew. Well, what do we think, Edward? Is, is, is oh, better go for race the order. two. There's the order there. We're going to have Kevin Parrish in first. Sven Dammel in second. Miguel Torres in third. George Gruber fourth. Mickey Friesen in sixth with Jeff Andres in sixth place there. In seventh is Ron Wolf, Emerson Gowden, Chase Brown, Giovanni Romano leading the Clios with David Johansson not far behind him. And then in the Toyota GRS sixes, it's going to be Andrew Sharp. In the MX-5s, it's going to be Timo Brandley, Hafer up in 13th, then Marcus Law, Tim Classens, and then Tyler Augustino, and then Justin Delano with Richard Corfor coming in 18th. 19th is Harry Fox, Damon Mitchell, 20th, Adam Swatson Druber in 21st, Ryan Chevalier, 22nd, Austin Tucker in 23rd, and Jelly Verstraten in 24th in that Clio. In the 25th is Akram, Akram Zamoni and then Gary Brown and Patrick Reed in the GR86s. Eduardo Aguirre in number 28. Leader of the Jettas, Jake Cranstone in 29th. And then Colin Weiss in 30th place. Chris Sofa in 31st with Brooks Clayton in 32nd. Alex King in 34. Martin Pierce in 34th. And then the next Jetta of Daniel Downing and Eric Manneveld. Carl Ridley in 37th, and Christopher Rowe in 38th, Logan Warfield in 39th, Matty Cripland in 40th, Ricardo Risardo in 41st, and Jer Jeremy Agard in 42nd place. In 43rd is Kyle, Kyle Smith, and then Chris So in 44th, and in Fox in 45th, Justin Michaelo in 46th, Duncan Murray down in 47th with uh, uh, Jesus Amandari in 48th. 49th is Neil Rock, Stephen Burns down in 50th, Lincoln Fox in 51st, and Sam Bernholz down in 52nd. Ooh. Well, only 52 cars on the grid in a multi-class race in five different classes of cars that are not very far apart on horsepower around a 17-23 long corner track here, Edward. What Interesting use wrong? of the word only, James, but uh, only 52. Wow, what am I supposed to put there? It, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Demel is going to fancy another run at Kevin Parrish uh, in the Clio Cup. I think Johansson's going to be really annoyed that the Super Swede made that mistake uh, under pressure from the Canadian behind him, which let Romano steal that class win from him. He'll want revenge this time around. Uh, and then further down, there was that uh, crazy freeway uh, VW Jetta Cup that Jake Cranston triumphed in in the uh, first race. He'll want to keep that gap to Downing because... Uh, Mantinveld looked very, very threatening. The Ben looks driver uh, until he made that mistake, fine, uh, which left him behind Dan Downing and gave him a yeah. lot of extra work to do. So, uh, yeah, it, it's difficult to say which way it's going to go, but uh, keep your eyes open because you, you can guarantee there's going to be action once this gets underway. Yeah, there is going to be action, action, action. Joey G, lots of driver equals lots of action. FTW. There we go. That's Joey G's opinion on it. I thought you misspelled FTR there, but of course means for the win. For the win. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm being stupid. Uh. <laughs> Never mind, dear sir. It's fine. It happens to the best of us as these guys are on their run around turn 13 currently. Giovanni Romano and Andrew Sharp not very far apart on the racetrack. Different classes, of course. Clio's and a Toyota GR86 and then Timon Bramley in the MX-5. There's Jake Cranston 
in the Jeddah. He ends up down in 28-29. I say 28 by the time he gets there. But obviously Kevin Paris is leading us away back in the Mustang there. So who's going to win? <laughs> oh, in all the classes? Okay. Oh, I don't know. If you think you can get all of them. I think Parrish and Demo will crash into each other and Torres will uh, sneak victory in the Mustang class. I think Johansson's going to get revenge on uh, Romano. Uh, I think uh, Andrew J. Sharp's going to have things covered for the Matodas. Uh, same with Tim on J. Bramley. I don't really see anyone challenging him there. And then I think it's going to be very, very close for VW Jettis, but I think Jake Cranston's going to take it. Well, there we go. Around the roller coaster we go with these Mustangs. They're the, really the only class that are very close together, apart from David Johansson and Giovanni Romano. You can see the Mustangs. Everybody else has got a little bit of a gap. So, hmm. well, get lined up. Get ready to go. The pace car is in. And an hour and 40 minutes will be underway right about. Is he going to be accelerating? The pace car is going to be over the cones. Now he is. Here we go. We're up and running. And we are green, green, green. We have Kevin Parrish leading the way down into turn one. He's got Sven Demmel right behind him. Miguel Torres battling away as these guys are coming down into turn one now. Parrish is going to take the whole shot into turn one. Demmel's not going to get close. It's action behind with Miguel Torres. David Johansson has taken the lead in the Clios. Bradley's still leading the MX5s. There's a lot of flicking around. Look at that chaos. Oh. Like four, four white, five white. Yeah, Everybody one of the white. got spun around there. Uh, so that was unfortunate. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you say four or five white, and somehow only one coming across of there. But I have a feeling that's not the lot. Oh, Duncan Moraes in the Jetta has also looped it round as oh. well. I had to recover us. Oh, that's Lincoln Gabby Fox Brown. right in the middle of a battle here. Yeah, Gary Brown off the side of the circuit. As Steve Burns trying to make his way through. And down the back end, it is just chaos, oh. chaos, chaos. Oh, there's a parking lot. There's a oh. car on his roof. Yeah, oh one of the Jettas is on, on its, on its uh, car door, actually. It's fallen sideways. And that's really, really dramatic then. Uh, but luckily, oh, dear. It's uh, Aguera, Eduardo <laughs> Aguera, that's uh, out of the race, sadly, in the 408. And he was the one who spun in the middle of the pack. And unfortunately, just could not be avoided in time when the S is there. There's a Jetta on his roof. Andy Fox was on his, well, on his side, if you want to be precise about it. But Andy <laughs> Fox was on his side. Out of Easy to write, though. Just open the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Andy, jump out and push the, push the door open, son. Come on. Um, we'll take a look back. This is what That's happened. We're on board as well. I love these on board shots. Oh, oh no way. So to unlucky. <laughs> he just sits there. And the world goes sideways. Luckily, it's driver's side, so it's easy to self right himself. It's a bit like Robot Wars. Just open the door. He's got and to roll over going. a little bit, isn't he? You know what I mean? <laughs> He's like, a, he's like a tortoise trying to correct himself, you know. Give it a wiggle, son. Give it a wiggle. That's Andrew Sharp with Justin Delano here on your screen at the moment. Uh, back, there we go. Back into the Mustangs of Gwaldin. He's trying to get away from David Johansson. And then Chris Chase Brown is further up the order. So Johansson doing a great job. He cleared Giovanni Romano and Tim Classens. It looks like Marcus Law in the other Cleo, looks like he's possibly got a slowdown as he's dropping down the order. Patrick Reed is on your screens here currently. And is that downing behind in the, in the, in the, um, yeah, it is downing in the getter behind him. He's mixing it up up six places in 29th. And poor old Aguirre, Fox, Duncan Murray, and Sam Van Alstyne, Alex King, not having a good time of it here either. So, yeah, good racing. Yeah, well, Downing's got to make up those positions because he's about four seconds behind Jake Cranston then. So he needs to make sure Cranston doesn't just disappear into the distance if he wants to get into that uh, victory battle. Uh, because uh, if Cranston can build a big gap, then he's going to do exactly what he did in the heat, isn't he? Where he just is able to manage a gap and let Downing, Ridley and Mantenbelt fight each other. And Mantenbelt has struck behind Carl Ridley in that Jetta battle as we look at Kevin Parrish holding off the three Mustangs behind him. Once yeah, more. he is. He's still hanging on. That's Demo and Miguel Torres and Gruber behind that one. And then Freakson is slowly being dropped off. There is a massive bunch of cars 
from Marcus Law down in 16th with Tyler Augustino all in the mix. It is just utter and utter chaos. This is Ryan Chevalier on your That's screen. Harry Fox. He's trying yeah, to go around. The outside. Barry. Oh, oh off he goes. He's still up. Still up. Can he slow down? I think that's Akram Zamoni, is it? Zamoni there with Harry Fox and uh, uh, and Gruber. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. So there we go. But great job from all of these. There he is. Yes, yeah, Fox and Truba. <laughs> he just yeah. appeared in the middle of them there. Yeah, I know. He was kind of, he, he he was kind of forced into doing that because, <laughs> oh, there we go. And he lets us Fox and Truba right through. Yeah, it does. Akram Zamoni now in the Clio next on his list. It looks like Harry Fox has cleared Jake Cranston. Cranston in the Jetta just behind these guys. I think Fox has uh, fallen behind Chevalier now, so yeah. he, he went right to the inside like he had a problem there. He, unless he's got a slowdown, of course. Mm. He's still on the inside now, mind you. It's Fox. He's now coming back through. Pearson's doing a great job managing to hold on in that MX-5. That's just about the site of where he went round in race one. I'm, I'm glad he made it through on that one because I really did think he was going to end up going round in race two as well. So lucky enough, Martin Pearson manages to hold on we have Harry Fox behind him. So action, action, action. And I'm just keeping an eye on the leaders. Demo slowly becoming under attack from Torres up front. Romano's doing a great job in the Clio. So all the way through, let's just fight, 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 fight. And 49 cars on the circuit. Yep, and still 94 minutes to go then. So everyone, How many? Yeah, 134, if you want to be uh, make it sound like a bigger number. Uh, oh no! Uh, one, one, yeah, one hour thirty-four minutes. Yeah, yeah not one hundred and thirty-four. Ninety-four minutes is fine. It's the yeah. same thing. Well, just a bit. It's a length of a football game here, yeah. and Giovanni Romano is in second place in the Clio's. Timo Bradley's got five seconds gap over Richard Corfro in the MX fives. Andrew Sharp hasn't got that luxury in the GR eight sixties. He's got Delano not too far behind him. So they're going to have to be a little bit careful. And Miguel Torres, how long before these guys start getting into our oh, first car lapped will be the 10th place man in the MX-5. So that, that's Eduardo Aguirre. We're, he's coming down into turn 12 with Oak Tree. And Miguel Torres and Kevin Parrish coming off through the snake section. So, yeah, not going to be long. 2.45 for Parrish. And Aguiz looks like he's actually out now. So it could be Gary Brown who's doing a 4.21. Uh, no, that's not right. We can't have a MX-5, a, a GR86 going faster. As we go on to a Patrick Reed replay of what happened to him. Oh, he's already caught the grass. His, his left tire went on the curb as well. And unfortunately, good night, B Vienna. So there we go. Uh, if you join Daniel, if you join the, the FTR Ooh. events Discord as Logan, Logan. Warfield, oh. Oh, it's just gone into the barrier. If you join the FTR Discord down in the description below, buddy, and then you can speak to them. I'm not sure if there's places available for this one, all right, because they are 60 car strong and quite full. So, but you can join the FTR Discord. There, uh, um, at the base in Ooh. in the description. And uh, Romano, Romano in trouble. Tim yeah. Carson's up the inside at 13 then. So Johansson Just. got through as well. Yeah. Incredible, incredible action. And we've still got an hour and 32 on the clock. And, well, I'm not even sure where I want to be looking here, let alone poor old Timon on the camera duty, because he's got Harry Fox, Martin Pearson, Cranston, Colin Weiss, Chris Soffer, and Adrian Tucker. That's all the way down the order. They're all coming through. You can see a Mustang coming through. That's Austin Tucker in his Mustang as he's trying to come through on the sofa behind. So, yeah, cars, cars, cars. Just car, car, car. Now, you can imagine all of these cars on this track in the rain. I think I've not got the bandwidth for that right now. Kevin Parrish has actually uh, made a mistake and dropped a third <laughs> and dropped behind Demel and Torres in that uh, lead fight then. So despite having fastest lap to his name, Parrish uh, hitting trouble and Demel takes the lead. So here's what's yeah. happened. Yeah, Kevin Parrish into 13. Oh, just outbreaked oh, himself. Yeah. 
gets it all wrong, not makes that corner, and that corner represents its name. <laughs> but this is exactly what you were saying about the Mustangs, isn't it, James? Where lovely down the straights, but when it comes to negotiate the corners, that's when the problems start as mm -hmm. he goes up the inside of Miguel Torres. There's Kevin Parrish. Wow, that's a really incisive move there in the uh, infield section there. Yeah, that's the thing. They're, they're great. They just don't handle very well. That's a, you've got to be an acquired driver to handle a Mustang. It, it's a very difficult car to drive. I had a friend who, who got the car. You know, I raced it. He was like, I'm driving the Mustang. I said, oh, go on then, son. I'm in the top split. I went, all right. He lasted about five minutes. And the next time I spoke to him, it was at the bottom end on the bottom split because he just couldn't drive the Mustang. So it's not a car that you can just hop into. Uh, so Justin Michaela in the joint, TR, the joint Toyota GR86s there. Fighting out, he's down in 11th with Patrick Reed there. We're going on to a replay of Gary Brown in the GR86. That's a spinning MX-5. And oh, the GR86 ended up punting itself off into the wall. Colin Weiss and Martin Pearson are having a battle. That's just been split by Austin Tucker. This is the beginning, that's the incident. And then you can see there, there was just nowhere to go on that one. Steve Burns had nowhere. Nobody had anywhere to go. And it's all a little bit messy. Well, Steve Burns at least came right to a stop and avoided uh, suffering the fate he did in the first race. As he's gowed in, trying to go up the inside then. And who's this he's fighting with for eighth place in the uh, class? That's Jeff Andres, I think he's just dispatched yeah. of. So uh, gowed in, uh, making a good move there, the uh, British Irishman. Yeah, you've got Chris Brown. Chris Brown is in front of him. These guys are in Chase Brown. Uh, oh, yeah, Chase Brown, sorry. <laughs> They've been swapping positions there again. So, but yeah, just action everywhere. I'm literally looking through the order. Even down in 35th and 36th with Eric Manabeld in the Jetta. Stratton in the Clios, they're scrapping it out. Further down as well. It's just all over the circuit. Yeah, exactly. It's all action all the time, everywhere, as uh, we look at this battle for sixth in the uh, MX-5s between uh, Christopher Rowe and whoever is ahead of Christopher Rowe, which is, of course, uh, oh, there we go, that's Chris Sewell, who's actually gone off and lets both Lincoln Fox and Christopher Rowe through. Yeah, unfortunately, when you make a mistake and you're in this match of a pack and you've got this many cars close to you, you you're going to lose not just one, you're going to lose a ton aren't you? You've got to be mindful of where you're at. And that's the thing. One man that is also mindful of where he's at is Cranstone in the top of the Jetta TDI. As you can see him on, uh, there on the left-hand side of your time in Tailwell. He is leading the Jettas. His next nearest Jetta, believe it or not, is Dan Downing from Goldwyn Motorsport. He's 6.8 seconds. Just 6 points. Well, it's just broke. Is it? Yeah, 6.8, I believe it is. Uh, back from him. So Cranstone's just got to literally keep it on track as he's got Brooks Clayton battling away with him. So it's going to be an interesting one. Not over yet. We've still got, what have we got on the clock at the moment? One hour, 28 minutes still to go here of this feature race there. And it's currently 52 cars. We've got 50 on the racetrack over five classes. So 50 cars over five classes here, Edward. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I think the worst that can happen is the race being stopped or cancelled because I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, Kyle Ridley, by the way, is four, three tenths behind Dan Downing. So no wonder Dan is dropping away from the back of Jake Cranston because he's just absolutely defending for his life from the Australian driver then as we look at Sven Demmel still holding on to the lead from Kevin Parrish. That mistake from Parrish really gave him the opportunity he needed. But Parrish, as we've seen all day, his pace has been really really strong so uh, it's going to be really hard to build a gap to him here unless there's another mistake and Miguel Torres and Gruber luckily still there to keep the pressure up on Kevin Parrish yeah Downing I've got we're going to have to look down at the uh, Jettas in a minute because Downing is under pressure desperately from Ridley there and also Matt Cr um, Matty Cridland behind him in the Clios so Downing was all over the, uh, he's trying to escape currently Carl Ridley. That's looking back at Ridley, and Ridley was all over the back of him here. And these guys are going down into turn 13 at this moment in time. And Downing looking back at Ridley. If Ridley's going to have a go, he's going to send it. He's got the faster car of Matty Cridland right beside him. 
with Lincoln Fox also making an overtake in the Clio's. That's another oh. one. That's Valley's Rastrat and gone through. You can see it, Edward. It's just just tight all the time, isn't it? Yeah, big lockup for Dan Downing. <laughs> so he just cannot get the car. Even with that minimal VHB, he cannot get the car stopped in time. Just about did anyway. But uh, yeah, you can see the more pressure that Carl Ridley applies, the more like difficult it is for Dan Downing to just hold him at bay. And that yellow VW Jetta as the uh, patriotically delivered Australian car of uh, Carl Ridley just continues to harass him through the S's. Well, if you add 11 hours onto now, that's literally where Carl Ridley's time zone is, being that he's from Australia. So 11 hours is going to take it to about eight in the morning, I think. Give or take, depending on what side it is. Normally, I talk to him in the morning after a race. It's like seven or six or seven o'clock or so, and he gets up and goes to work after the race. So great job from Carl Ridley. Well committed into this action as he's in that VW Jetta chasing down the Goldwing Motorsports of Dan Downing in front. So this is where the action is. Closest battles on your screen in the race so far. We were looking back up front at Sven Demel, Kevin Parrish and Miguel Torres on there with Cranstone. You can see the class ticker going across the top. That's the VW Jetta order as we speak. Yeah, and look at the back of this group is starting to be dropped by Demel Parish and Torres. So it's turning once again into a free horse race slowly but surely as Demel now has built a second gap to Parish, who makes a small mistake there. Yeah, but it's not going to... It's got a long way to go, right? We've got an hour and 24 minutes. Don't forget the fuel situation. They are going to have to stop. Mm. They're going to have to make pit stops. So they're going to have to be very careful of that side of things. Down in the gr 86s Harry Fox and Ryan Chevalier Ooh. are running side by side. They're going in through the snake section currently. So Fox and Chevalier, if they make it through that, that would be absolutely amazing. I can tell you that much because um, they're running very close. In fact, Chevalier has just caught right at the moment. It's off the side of the grass. There we go. So that was... Uh so close between those two it was nip and tuck through the entire races almost and then Chevalle had to bail off track as well I'll tell you something else interesting that's happened Tim Clayson's has been lapping uh, over a second a lot faster than David Johansson's and the Benelux driver is right behind the Swede in that battle for the Clio Cup class lead so yeah, keep Giovanni your eyes on Rom that yeah Giovanni Romano is not too far back either is he when you think about it so Giovanni Romano still not too far back at all so he's in with an opportunity. They've got the leader of the 86s behind him. That's Sharp with Delano scrapping it out behind that as well. But these guys in the Clio's having a right old ding dong here. And yeah, some great action from all of these guys. And we've still got quite a lot of time, remind you. Yep, certainly. So uh, that means the battles can just run and run theoretically. But get the upper hand get that little bit of breathing space at this phase of the race that could pr prove crucial later on and of course with uh, we don't, with all the traffic that's uh, there to negotiate especially for the mustangs who are going to come upon it first that could really end up being a big obstacle for them to negotiate mm. how long before they get lapped do we think they're coming round now that's night for 10th in the mx5s that's logan warfield who's off the side of the circuit He's just about to be lapped in front. He's just gone off Logan Warfield, unfortunately. Alex King looks like he's out. Edward Aguirre is still running, but he's trying to escape from the leaders. Tim Classens oh. is currently on your screen. Big and old lockup. Lock up. Yeah, that's just the cars getting light on the right end uh, of these Clios. They're very nimble cars. They're, you can door bang them a little bit, and they will take a little bit of a punch. And under braking, they generally do puff smoke out the back of the wheels oh looks like Zanune in trouble he drops right to the back of the Clio field oh Zanune what have you been up to he's in the pits whatever oh, he's done right. yeah he's this. in the pit lane on his own Zanune so Demo and Parrish good. getting past the MX-5s at the back of the field so Warfield leaves plenty of room then for Kevin Parrish and there's Zanune yeah, Zanune in the pits, unfortunately, for him. But Klassen still in this Clio class with David Johansson and Giovanni Romano still scrapping away. I wonder when we are going to be looking at pit stops here. What do we think? Well, it depends how big the tank is, of course. And oh, another lockup for David Johansson. 
Yeah, these leaders coming through. Now, somebody did suggest playing Jaws music when the leaders come through. <laughs> because you can just see them for all of the slower cars. Uh, Klassen's has just got Johansson. Johansson's just got to slow down, unfortunately. Yeah, it looks like he's lost a place to Giovanni Romano at the front of the Clio's. So Klassen's, Romano and Johansson has swapped places. That's now your one, two, three. Paris still trying to work his way through the traffic coming in and he's still trying to catch Sven Bemmel. Yeah, Torres got really badly held up there as well because he's still stuck behind the MX-5, look. Yeah, he just can't get through. He's going to get him. He should get him now on the inside. He did do. Miguel Torres did manage to clear him. Uh, Klassen's has come a little bit of a cork in the bottle. He's got two of his own class and three of the GR86s behind him. Four of his own class, in fact, because Marcus Law is at the back end of this street. But Tim Klassen's battling away with Giovanni Romano, David Johansson, and also the GR86s and Sharp. Miguel Torres is the first one to go into the pits of the Mustangs. He's the first one, so that they lasted 20 minutes, the Mustangs. So we go to a replay of what happened here. But this is how Johansson lost the lead then. Yeah, he, he got a big old slowdown, and unfortunately had to go over to the right-hand side, and everybody else just goes through. And he slots in behind the first place, man. He manages to get it off. So, yeah, very, 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 very tough luck for Klassen's as Parrish and Devil still battling it out up front. Yep, it's like you say, it could end up being the pit stops that uh, plays a big role in that battle as well, whether Demol or Parrish, which of the two of them pits versus Torres going quite slowly as well. Looks like he's been impeded quite badly and dropped to eighth, so big. Oh, he's pit, that's what's happened. So Torres, having been held up by the MX-5, he's started to pit to get out of the traffic then. Yeah, it's probably not a bad thing, to be honest. Unfortunately, it drops him all the way in. Vice is in, Clayton's in, the Vassal Truba is in the pits here. Dan Downing's just gone in for the lead, uh, from second place. He's lost a place to Carl Ridley. So Ridley does manage to go through. Downing's into the pits. And Miguel Torres escapes out the way and tries to find some clean air. However, clean air is not Timo Brandley, Marcus Law, Tyler Augustino, Justin Delano, Andrew Sharp, Giovanni Romano, or David Johansson. David Johansson's actually just got back past Romano in that battle for second. There you go, you see the white and purple uh, 203 clear cup uh, just separating the two yellow and blue machines of uh, Klassens and then Romano behind. So a uh, good little move there from Johansson as he recovers from that slowdown. Yeah, he does, but how's he going to get? He's starting to make a move back forward. He's not, he wasn't able to pass Klassens over the first, what's that, 8, 20 minutes. Is he going to be able to pass him? for the rest of it or is he going to take a dive into the pit lane to get out of the way that's going to be the thing is he going to dive into the pit lane but Klassen's at the moment is leading this Cleo class with Johansson and Giovanni Romano as the Cleo lead goes past on the top of your screen so great job from all of these guys it's just well incredible action from all over the race circuit. We've done our best to bring you everything we possibly can. We've got the uh, Clio battle on your screen and the GR86 is just behind that, led by Andrew Sharp, Justin Delano, and uh, Tyler Augustino. So they're battling it out once more here as these guys are going off through turn 17D down into 18A, the left-hander, and then dropping in to 18B, 19A, 19B, and then into the roller coaster of turn 20. Yeah, difficult situation for Sharp, isn't it? Because he can't really go as fast as he'd ideally like because he's got uh, Romano in his way, essentially, and that's allowing Delano and Agostini to keep with him there. So that right red uh, Toyota GR86 just uh, cannot make any headway in the lead. He's, just got, he's got to worry about defending from Delano as much as... He's racing with Romano for the overall order and in come oh, the two leaders. Yeah, and the GR86s are in as well. And Kevin Parrish is in. There's like a rush of everyone gone in as they've all lasted about 22 minutes. 22 minutes out of an hour of 40. That's 44, 66. It's at least another three pit stops these guys are going to have to make. <laughs> well, we've got a long evening in store then, haven't we? Uh, <laughs> I think yeah, Spend you want to work out the pit out. strategies. Say again? Edward, we'll get you in the back with your calculator working out the pit strategies, all right? <laughs> okay, beautiful. 
Look at this, Johansson side by side with, is that uh, Klassens? Yeah, coming out together. Klassens and Johansson coming out side by side. It's the battle of the Cleos. Who's going to get it? Is it going to be Johansson? He's got the inside line going into turn one. It's smoke from both. Klassen still running around the outside. He's still holding on there if he can. Is he going to be able to make it? Because they're coming down into NASCAR. He's not. Johansson snatches the lead here. And, uh, well, it's now swapped back as they've gone through the first pit stop cycle. That was a good pit work. He must have hit his marks perfectly there, Johansson, to get back ahead of Tim Klassen's. And that could be the overall class the lead with Romano yet to pit ahead of them. Yeah, Romano's still got to pit. He's got 33 seconds, mind you. So he's got a bit of a gap, but their pit lane times are 38, 39. So it's going to be really close. And I've learned not to take into consideration the pit lane times in general because they don't end up representing what they've done in the pits. So you've got to be a little bit smart. Uh, Ryan Chevalier, down in sixth place in the GR86 is. He's battling away. That's Harry Fox in front of us as these guys are going now down into South Bend, the left-hander, before they go into what was the oak tree. Of course, no more oak tree on this corner. Sad story with the oak tree on corner at VIR. Got struck by lightning and then unfortunately had to be removed from health and safety reasons. But there was a big old oak tree in that corner and iRacing did the same. They took the, uh, took the oak tree out. Ah, that's a shame. It wasn't really, <laughs> wasn't really a, a safety issue in eye racing necessarily because it is just background. But, uh, but yeah, at least uh, that tree getting struck by lightning, it could be uh, turned into the Wonder Bat by uh, Homer Simpson. So, <laughs> so not all is lost. Nice. <laughs> uh, so Demel is going to have to come in uh, fairly he's soon, in now. and he's got that 39 second gap to Parish, so it could be very, very close on exit. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on Parish. Parish is coming around the final corner. Demel still in the pits. He's still in the pits. Is he actually moving as of yet? Yes, he is moving. Parrish is going to be up to full speed. Demel's out. He's out and gone. He's escaped. Has Demel is going to hold on. Parrish is closing in. 2.1, 1.9, 1.8. There they are. Not very far apart whatsoever. But Giovanni Romano, he's in the pits. He's stopped. Where is David Johansson? Johansson is, oh, this could be close. He's coming around the hog pen. Now, the second to last corner, he's going to take the last long looping right-hander. And Giovanni Romano still stationary. He's on his way out. Romano's on his way out. And I think he's going to clear them. I think he is. He's going to have to speed. They're coming. It's all going to be very close. There's Romano. He didn't make it. Oh. Giovanni Romano just misses out and is in third place. Johansson and Klassens got through and Romano 1.3 seconds back. So that was a close one there. The um, other GR86 Sharps got a 2.3 second over Agostino and in the MX5s it's Bramley, Corfor and Smith. And then in the Jetters, Cranston's got a seven second gap over Dan Downing. We have Ridley a further second behind that one there as well. So, um, yeah, poor old Romano just misses out, almost tries to get out, just doesn't quite make it through. Yeah, but uh, let's not forget Romano was third behind the both of them before uh, that pit stop phase. So he hasn't actually lost that much. If anything, he's uh, staying at, he's gained a little bit of time actually overall, and he's got uh, he can go a bit longer on the fuel as a result of that. So. I would say keep your eyes on the Canadian. He's still in that fight for the uh, lead in the Cleos. Yeah, there's Mike Pearson and the little MX-5s there on your screen at the moment. He's got the closing Dick Cranston in the Jetta behind. This is going to be an interesting scenario for Pearson as he's got, I believe, in front of him is one of the other guys as we go on the board with Richard Corfort. Also, he's in the GR86s. So great action from these guys again. And it's just action all the way through the field, isn't it? It's just incredible. This amount of cars, this many classes, they're all a little bit spread out at the moment. And yet David Johansson and Tim Classens are not leaving each other alone as, ben, as Dan Downen is on your screen at the moment. And he's got, is that Carl Ridley? No, no, it's not. It's one of the other jetters in front of him, I believe, for Dan Downen. 
Um, with uh, Duncan Murray, is it in the gold wing? Duncan Murray? Yes. Duncan Murray has got Jeremy Agard in front of him and then Christopher Rowe in the little MX-5 behind him. Yeah, yeah Downing is still uh, got Ridley all over the back of him in that Australian livery Jetta. So, uh, yeah, this is Murray versus Agard. And uh, Jeremy Agard uh, still resolutely holding on to that sick position. And it's going to be interesting to see... Uh, these two fight with that Mazda right behind them as well, whether the Mazda can get involved in the battle, whether Duncan Murray's going to use that to his advantage or just avoid uh, get a tangling with that with the Mazda. That could definitely be key to how this battle works out. But Agard at the moment got a half a second gap, so he'll be able to manage that at least through 13 and then 14. Yeah, hopefully we'll... Ooh, Agard keep it on the circuit. Going around turn 13, that's going to allow Duncan Murray to close right in here. Goes into the tricky section of the spiral. Downhill they go. 15A and 15B, Duncan Murray and Jer uh, Jeremy Agard. Still. Oh, was that a slow down He's got a slow down. Yeah, I pulled over, he goes. And, and Agard's got a slow down, unfortunately. Is he going to let the MX-5 go through? He's not, but that's allowed Duncan Murray to go up to fifth in class here. So a great job from him. Handsome under attack from Giovanni Romano then on uh, a long, bigger, slightly heavier fuel tank, but uh, fresher tires too. So Romano will be trying to use this to his advantage. Uh, Romano, Johansson, Klesens, they've just been completely inseparable in the first uh, third of this race so far. Meanwhile, we've also got Gruber fighting Torres in the Mustang class for third, about uh, four tenths behind him. But this is very, very nip and tuck between these three cars then. Uh, so Klassens will still be controlling the pace, still locking up as well as they just go through the oak tree corner at turn 12 and on the spiral straight then. Yeah, David Johansson behind with Klassens and Romano. Romano has managed to close that gap up. Torres has opened up a gap of about six tenths to Gruber, so that's opening as well. But it's the Clios that are bringing all the action. We've got Tyler Agostino and Justin Delano in the GR86 is not too far away from each other. Austin Tucker has just gone through there, so he's overtaken him in turn 13. But Delano and Agostino still fighting it out down in the GR86s. That's the second and third in class overall still battling away so still a great job from all of these cars currently at the moment yeah certainly uh, so closely bunched especially the uh, gr86s i think because they've been uh, sort of were slowly getting bunched up behind the the clio cup leaders weren't they <laughs> behind mm. romano but uh, now the pits has allowed them to separate a little bit more there's a bit of a train forming <laughs> between them yeah there is is it now unfortunately it's just the way the racing goes. They've still got a long old time. They've only been going half an hour. They've still got an hour and 10 minutes left. So still plenty more time to get into more action and, and get into, what can we say, more drama, should we say? <laughs> like you never have enough dr drama here <laughs> in FTR. No. That's for sure. This... Why? Uh, we love a good bit of oh, drama. As the Romano. Yeah, Romano's trying to go ahead of Johansson there. Is he going to be able to make it through? And yeah. selling the dummy here. He's not going to make it through and down into turn one. It's so hard to make an overtake when two drivers are running side by side with each other. That's the problem. When they're so close on pace, it's so hard to make an overtake. You've got to rely on the person behind you to make a mistake. And that alone is tough, as you're going to see with Miguel Torres and George Gruber. They're coming around 13. It... It's just incredible that we haven't had... Uh, I was almost expecting a lot more drama than what we've got, Ed. I think that's the thing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't come in with any expectations, so I've just been accepting it as is. But uh, look at this. So Torres, despite pitting early, there was no undercut really to help him gain time relative to the leaders. He's found himself falling gradually into the clutches of uh, your Gruber, as you say. And uh, Gruber now just all over the back of him, just starting to move and uh, make shapes as he uh, attempts to look for that elusive opening to get him 
onto the bottom step of the rostrum in the Mustang class, of course. So uh, they've got plenty of track to themselves. It's all going to be down to your Gruber, and there's some inventive driving here and whether Toros can uh, repel it. I'm going to have a look back at some of the replays here. There's Christopher Rowe in that little MX-5. That's turn 13. And he's going to go over the curb, over the exit curb, spin the car up, get all loose, out of shape. Managed to hold on to it, though. Fair play, Mr. Rowe. So it's a great job from him. Andy Fox, who ended up on his door in race one, comes into turn 13 way too hot. Goes off the side of the circuit, unfortunately, for Mr. Fox there. Yeah, uh, lucky we didn't lose the cones, though, of course. It's Chris Sewell. Oh, there we go. The massive burnout as the rears just completely lose traction through that looks like a three and four there as now we cut to ron wolf oh just Whoa. going straight on so something went very very wrong with it. his steering there as gruber passes torres while we've been watching these replays yeah logan warfield into the wall again oh, i just managed to get it stopped so miguel torres past gruber have a look at that one now. Looks like Gruber just runs. Him. Yes, you're yeah, right. Gruber runs a little bit wide, unfortunately, and that allows Torres to go through. So Gruber and Torres. This is the replay of the initial overtake. You watch Gruber gets through, and then he comes way too hot into turn one. Way, way too hot. Opens the door back up, and Torres says, "Thank you very much. I'll have some of that, my dear." Uh, you can David see Johansson. Torres saw that coming as well. Very, very smart driving by Miguel. Oh Torres. yeah, when you when you're trying to avoid a missile, you want to look in your rearview mirror, <laughs> you know. And he was coming through quick there as Johansson, Klassens, and Romano still in these Clios. These guys have not left each other alone, and they've still got 64 minutes to go, and they're still, still going at it here and it's gonna be absolutely insane they're coming in through what will be the snake section it is it's pretty much if you line your car up correctly through that you can't straight line that circuit straight line that part of the circuit this one is a little bit more tricky you've got to make sure you're turning cars early to get over the curves on the exits you can see he's trying to take as much of the curves as he physically is allowed there classic before he starts coming through and into the oak tree Justin McHale looks like he's just had an unfortunate incident. Into the oak tree we go. More smoke out the back end of Classen's car. That's going to allow Johansson to go and get even closer. That's one of the Jettas in front of us. I think that's Andy Fox, actually. I think it is, In front yeah. of us, yeah. So close action with these three. These, they've not left each other alone since the beginning. No, they haven't. Like I said, just absolutely inseparable. Nose to tail the whole way through. Do not overtake, it says on the back of Tim Klassen's car. But David Jake Johansson, I think he might have a bit of trouble reading that at the moment at this speed. <laughs> but, this speed? They go like 120 mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, compared to how uh, I drive, that's still pretty fast. <laughs> hey, yeah, mate. I, I'm like Grandad Joe, in, in, you know, in a car that goes a lot faster than probably what I need to be blatantly honest but at the end of the day you've got to do what's safe and obviously been carrying the kids around a lot of the time mm. you need to make sure that you are keeping it nice and safe with the kids in the back partly due to the fact that the wife will probably kill me and i'd end up on the sofa anyway <laughs> i mean there's nowhere worse than the sofa of course as johansson actually goes a little bit wide so that's romano now so this is the problem with johansson if he tries to move on classes and it doesn't work out then immediately he's going to have to deal with romano all over the back of him and as I said, on slightly fresher tyres, having pit that lap later than the two ahead of him. Yeah, they go to a replay of Miguel Torres. Oh, that's 13. Oh, Miguel just manages to avoid the porter potty. And Gruber must have got through him past him before that as well. So he's just spinning in frustration almost. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? when you're in a car that's got a lot of power but not a lot of grip in an ideal scenario. So it's always going to be tough, but Miguel Torres in that Mustang doing a stellar job. Don't forget, he gets up and running. He's still sitting in fourth, but he's just got a lot more of a gap back to Gruber. Delano and Augustiano are swapping places as we speak. And they're side by side, currently round turn one. Tyler Augustano on the uh, there in the 306 
takes the position away from Justin Delano, who's not too far behind whatsoever. So nice little back oh, going on in the GR86. This is, of course, third in class. Uh, battle for second, sorry, in class, as they've got Andrew Sharp, who's about 4.3 seconds up the road. So Andrew Sharp made a breakaway in the GR86. This is less Lest August, Augustino and Delano to battle it out for that final podium places. Yep, so a good uh, instinct there from Agostino to find a way through uh, around the outside then of uh, Justin Delano. But Delano will not take this sitting down as they go up towards Oak Tree, turn 12. And uh, look at the way Justin Delano is just uh, moving around looking for that little opening trying to maximize and optimize his exits using the windscreen wipers interestingly no rain so that's really just a i'm going to come back through uh motion he's making there i think we'd love to see rain in this oh i, I think judging by that action from delano i think he would agree with you let's look how oh. close he's getting into 13. yeah he's got to try and get it stopped that's the problem over speed he had going down that little straight he's got to be able to get it stopped here did That's manage Andy to get Fox it stopped holding him up now yeah but uh, is we, there's an inch okay so blue flags are, are did by i racing in this one so basically the uh, advisory blue flags will be considered advisory as per i racing's own rules in condition when a car is a car is multiple laps down and being approached by the leaders of a class, they may not purposefully impede the leader's progress or, over, or an overtake an attempt without justification. So, yeah, they managed to clear him, and Andy Fox did manage well, to get out of the right way. he moved right out of the way yeah. while you were reading those rules. So it's almost like he had a live feed of you and thought, well, I better get out of the way before James goes off on one at me. <laughs> so, hey! <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. How rude. Possibly right, though. To be fair, but I read the rules first before as Miguel Torres course, is into the pits. We're saying that around about 42, 43 minutes was going to be the pit stops for the next for the Mustangs again. So well, we're on he that pit 40 early in the first mark. in, didn't mm. he, Miguel? So this is him having to uh, deal with that, unfortunately, because that's going to limit his fuel mileage. Yeah, but don't forget, he also went round, didn't he? Oh yeah. So, so the tires are done. Yeah. yeah, I would have thought they've got to be looking at changing tires. They cannot go an hour of 40 on these tyres. It's just not going to be possible. Demel is coming through the bat markers once more. So Demel's making his way through at the moment. I believe that's Chris Sell in front of us. Of course, they've all had their own moment. Simon Bradley leading the MX-5 class by 14 seconds. And down Downing and Carl Ridley are not leaving each other alone as they're coming through at turns 20 and 21. And Ridley's finally got ahead then. Stan Downing, who'd held him off for about the first half hour of the race, is finally that defense broken. But unfortunately for Carl Ridley, 44 seconds to uh, Jake Cranston. Or is it 10 seconds? Sorry. Yeah, it's 10 seconds. 10 sorry. seconds, yeah. I was going to say, 44 seconds. I was the seconds. interval, and for some reason it said uh, the 44 second count. <laughs> oh, 10 seconds for these guys. Down in the Jetta class. And we're back in with the GR86s. Of Agostino and Delano. Oh, really close coming around the oak tree. Now we're going to be running into turn 13. Is this Agostino's moment? Is he going to be able to hold on? Is he going to be able to keep Delano behind him? Delano there behind in that yellow and black machine coming down into turn 13. You've got to get it stopped, get it stopped, get it stopped. Does just about get it stopped there. So a great job from him. You can see Agostino was just thinking about hovering around the middle of the road to defend and then switch back to the racing line there. So you can tell he's absolutely looking in those wing mirrors to know exactly where Delano is and where he needs to. It doesn't, you don't want to end up defending fresh air because otherwise you just create an opportunity for uh, Justin Delano to just uh, sweep by you in that sort of situation. So you do have to be a, a little bit more canny and that's exactly what Agostino's done. Yeah, he has at the moment. I'll say that at the moment because you never know what will actually happen here on this very tricky race circuit with 57 minutes remaining. We've finally broken into the last hour mark. And I can tell you one man who is going to probably be enjoying this racing right about now is Martin Pearson down in 25th, the third place in the MX-5s. 
He's got Colin Vice not too far apart at all behind him. So, Colin, this is the battle for the third and fourth place in the MMX Fives as we're keeping an eye on these top two. Uh, the second and third battle in the GR86s. Gaudin has gone into the pit, but there is the Vice and um, oh, the Vice and Pearson's battle as the Cleo of uh, Jelly Verstraten has just put himself in between what was developing to a quite a nice little battle down there with Pearson and Vice. Yep, and uh, meanwhile, uh, in uh, the Cleo's, uh, Romano still continues to be just stuck to the rear bumper of David Johansson as well. He's been that way for like three or four laps now. He's been within four attempts consistently. And a couple of times he's had a, a few goes at, at getting passed down the straight, but Johansson has defended that incredibly well then as we continue to watch this oh, MX-5 whoa. battle and into the pits. Come, yeah, that Vice has gone Vice. in. Uh, that's put an end to that battle, hasn't it? Uh, the Vice has gone in. So he's gone into the pits. That's released Pearson a little bit. He's still got uh, Jelly Verstraten behind him. So Jelly there having a uh, battle in, in his Cleo as he's trying to work his way through sixth in class. So still action from them. Back in to the Cleo action. <laughs> Classens has escaped a little bit. Johansson and Romano, not so much. Feels like Classens into turn 12 is just constantly throwing smoke bombs rather than locking up because Johansson and Romano just find themselves greeted with just a cloud of uh, smoke uh, every time they're trying to battle each other. And uh, uh, it certainly feels like almost both brakes being locked up there, but uh, Classens uh, putting the tyres oh, through again for a lot of punishment there to try and build that small gap. And uh, Johansson has just got his mirrors absolutely full of the Canadian Giovanni Romano at the moment. Yeah, Romano has done a great job since he came out of the pits. He didn't quite manage to get the jump. They were like 1.4 up the road, and he's managed to close it in on him. And Clarkson's has escaped. He's, I think, to be honest, in a weird kind of way, he's using the draft out of Austin Tucker's Mustang to pull himself forward as Clarkson's. He's right up behind that Mustang. So I think he's probably using that little bit of draft to try and open up the back of Johnson. The Mustangs are in again. Parrish, Gruber, Friesen and Brown are all into the pits. There's a couple of Jettas in there. Jesus, uh, Jesus and also Stephen Burns are also into the pit. So the second round of stops is starting and we've got 54 minutes on the clock. Yeah, and Demel, as before, staying out that extra lap. And is that going to help him in his fight against Kevin Parrish because Demel could try something a little bit different running slightly longer on the field but of course this puts uh, Miguel Torres of course back into fourth position after making that uh, unscheduled early stop yeah it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out you know because these guys are still going to have to go one more I think 22 minutes will be 33 it's possible that they might end up having a splash and dash as well Andres Tucker and Fox are now into the pits. This is Steve Burns in the VW Jetta. He's got G um, Jesus Armandari in front of him. Now, I'm going to presume that's going to be Jesus, or it probably can come on the mic and say, no, James, it's actually Jesus. <laughs> well, let's ignore Look, the religious connotations right, there. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Steve Burns, <laughs> who had a really tough heat, didn't he, being hit in the pits, has a lasted a lot longer in this race in the 508 with the big Scottish Saltier on the side of that car looking to get that VW Jetta into the top seven then as we cut back to overall uh, leader Demel who I think is about to head into the pits uh, very very soon he might be able to run an extra lap because if you run an extra lap in the first stint than everyone else you can run another lap longer in the second stint you can't you so just extend that gap to the point where you're pitting a lot later than everyone else by the end of the race I tell you what, one man who's just had an absolute touch is David Johansson. They have just been separated. Him and Romano have just been separated by Chase Brown in the Mustang. You can see Brown's in the middle. He's got himself in the middle. But Johansson is there going, no, wait, no. Oh, come back. Come back. <laughs> come back. It's like the Titanic moment on the, on, on the door at the end. Come back. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'll never let go. Oh, yeah. well, I'm afraid you have to. <laughs> yeah. Romano, unfortunately, is still going to come at him an hour as well. 
Johansson's safety net has gone. And now he's going to be there praying that the ever revolving Canadian, that Giovanni Romano, is closing up on him again. And there's Andrew Sharp, who's just kind of run away in the GR86's battle at the moment, isn't he? Just taking two and a half seconds and he's just kind of escaped. Yeah, it's, it's looked very, very under control from Sharp, hasn't it? Uh, despite of those sort of battles uh, back into the Clio uh, Cup order. Uh, but he's really just been able to manage things. Uh, never really looked like Agostino, uh, Chevalier, Delano, they've all been too busy worrying about each other. Agostino only now has got the chance to break away, hasn't he? So no, no chance to get complacent here for Andrew J. Sharp. But certainly you have to say at about the halfway mark in this race, uh, Sharp has uh, been doing everything right so far. Yeah, he definitely has at the moment. So fair play to Sharp. He's done a stellar job. David Johansson, it happened. Oh, he's got into the pits. Now, this is Romano's opportunity, right? Cause he and Klassen's following longer. him in. Yeah, Klassen's went in. Johansson went in. Romano went one lap longer last time, didn't he? So this is 50 minutes now. So we're going to have to try and play this one out. I hope you've got your calculator there. Because it looks like a very damaged MX-5, or is that just my eyes behind that situation? I think that's uh, the MX-5 we saw get in trouble is earlier. Warfield? Was it Logan Warfield? Yeah, yeah. he's three laps down now. <laughs> They're oh, all desperately just it. phasing through one another. And that looks like uh, Amber Pitts comes class ends. So this is yeah. a long stop for David Johansson. Romano last pitted. Yeah, what lap did he last pit on? Remember, Romano? he went a lap longer, nine. didn't he? Yeah, lap nine he pitted. So, technically, he might be able to go one more. Johansson on the battle of the pit lane exit. Sven Demmel is still going. Uh, Tim Klassen did manage to escape out. Johansson is now into the grips of Marcus Law. So, Johansson had a bit of a bad one there. Yeah, perhaps he missed his marks or uh, maybe had some other issue there. But that's cost him quite a bit of time. And now he's gone from fighting for the lead to fighting to stay on the podium. Oh. Logan Warfield. Oh, dude. Not only did he obviously have a bit of a bad one, didn't he? He's also had a worse one. He blew his engine double downshifting and he's got 35 minutes of repairs. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised he's still. I'm surprised he's staying in. To be honest, the uh, British Virtual Touring Car Championship. How are we doing, guys? I'm very well. Thank you very much for that one. If a car has an accident that goes to the pits for repair, can the can they fill up? Hold on, Phil. Can they fill up with fuel to the end of the race? Depends on how long they're in the pit lane for. They're on limited fuel. That's the situation. They've all been fuel capped. So nobody's got a full tank. They're going, what was it, about 22 minutes ahead at the moment? Yeah, that's about uh, the max, isn't it? As we see mm. Sven Demolt finally come out from his pit stops. He came in about 50 seconds ahead of Kevin Parrish. So he should come out with a very, very comfortable lead at the moment. There is Parrish. Yeah, Parrish is coming around the start of the pit lane. Demol's already on his run and he's gone around turn one. Parrish is in second place. He's not going to get there, unfortunately. But look at the man that lost out in the Clios. Daniel uh, David Johansson has got Marcus Law behind him. So Marcus Law, very, very close with David Johansson. So Johansson lost a lot of time in that pit lane. And that's allowed uh, Marcus Law to close back up. Yep, uh, you can see Marcus getting really excited here as he's starting to weave around and trying to put off David Johansson and make this force the Swede into a mistake here. So uh, Law needs to make sure he doesn't get too carried away, but uh, so far this has really uh, turned his race around. It's gone from sort of a kind of a lonely race, wasn't it? Because we're a long way ahead of Mitchell. Suddenly he's got someone to play with. Mm, he has, and do you know what? Romano's in the pits, and he, if he gets a boot on very, very quickly, Classens isn't going to get there. He's not going to get there, I don't think. Romano's on his way out. Classen's yeah, coming through again. Has he just jumped him? Has he just jumped him? He has. He looks like Giovanni Romano. No, no the outside how he goes. again? He's so close, Giovanni, on his pit stops. And Classen locks up again into turn one <laughs> for good measure as well, as if to say, well, oh. see ya. 
and he's even got the Mustang trying to uh, get past him as well. That must be Austin, isn't it? Austin Tucker. Oh, and he's going side by side with Romano and just about losing her space as Klassen goes off track there. So this is far from done and dusted. I think Klassen's and Romano, this is going to just run and run to the end now. Yeah, you have to got a big, he lost so much time in that pit lane. Uh, also an update on Logan. He used his fast repair from the lap one bumper cars incident that took place on lap one. So unfortunately, he's got no fast repair left. He's just oh, they get like there. a joker, do they? But yeah, it's that one fast repair. Um, so you're allowed to go in and just get all your damage done. Take seconds. But that's the only one they get. Hence, he's got to sit there now for 35 minutes. If he or plans on coming back out, of course, me personally. He can maybe I, I, watch uh, us until he, he has to come yeah, back. Yeah, come on, come on, watch us, Logan. Come on, watch us. Well, well, listen to us and watch the race. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you want I, I mean, you're the star, back. obviously, James. That's what they're all really Oh, for, give right? over, <laughs> Charlie. Blinking <laughs> hell. Oh, look at that Mazda. Oh, oh. Crash, and that's Marcus Moore that gets caught up in it. Oh, Chris Sell. Chris Sell. Oh, they, no, Johansson, Serrell, and Law having a little bit of a coming together. We'll see Johansson if we can get that one back. That one. There yeah, he is. Johan I thought he came out unscathed. Oh, but Law now dropping down to fifth behind Damon Mitchell. Yeah, Andrew Sharp there, unfortunately. Unfortunately, uh, sorry for Andrew Sharp. He's still leading by 4.4 seconds. Class is getting a little bit more spread out. That is Marcus Law. If we can go back just a little bit there, please, Mr. Producer, sir. And we will see the initial incident of these guys having a little bit of a ding dong. Here it is. So Cell goes up the inside, right? So Cell's there. He's on the outside. He gets hung up, and then boom. Marcus yeah, it Law looks like Sewell lost side. it, and the, unfortunately, that was exactly where Marcus Law was that he would lost it into. So, not really any. You can't really blame Marcus for that one. He was just wrong place, wrong time. Chris Sewell trying to get out of the way. Well, he was too far onto the grass and just, oh. Uh, do you know what? I'm starting to wonder whether or not it might have been easier for Sewell to basically just keep running down the grass line instead of <laughs> trying to take the track because technically he's off track. So that leaves the rules of, is he entitled to come back on? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, that I don't get myself in trouble for. So I'm not going to go too deep into that one. But you get what I mean? Mm. It looked to me like he just panicked there as we see Johansson. Oh, maybe he did not escape unscathed. Look at that coming almost He's to blown a dead up. stop. Oh, no. Did he blow up in the... He's blown the engine. I can't believe that. What the devil, my dearie me, went on there? Oh. oh. He goes a bit wide and then he just dies on him. That is so strange. All right, well, the upshot of this is Damon Mitchell, the American, now runs in third in the Clio Cup, which is uh, quite the turn up then. Uh, he's about, uh, let's see, quite a gap to, for Stratton as well, but he's 21 seconds behind the leaders. So uh... <laughs> oh, I don't think for him it's going to really matter, is it? Damon Mitchell is just going to love the fact that he's sitting in third here. He hasn't really had to do anything. We've lost David Johansson, Marcus Law's in the pits, and Akram Zimoni, um, Zin Zinoni is also out. That's tight. This, the field's starting to get a little bit more tidier, if that makes sense, with the way people are dropping out. It's getting a little bit tidier, that the, the less cars, so they're getting a little bit more spread as well. As you can see, the Jetta order on the left-hand side there, Cranston, Ridley, Downing, and Manivald. Yeah, and and Lisa's Downing. got back past Dan Downing as well on this lap. Yeah, Good they're, they're yeah. swapping backwards and forwards. I know there's a lot of love for the Jetta, and there's a lot of love for the car itself. So I, I think um, probably not a bad idea sticking this Jetta in. No, not at all. Uh, <laughs> we sort of brought it back from the dead, haven't we, the uh, VW Jetta? And uh, they've certainly put on a, a decent show there in those sort of midfield places. But Jake Cranston... About 14 seconds ahead of these two. He's really just uh, kept things going quietly, neatly, tidily, which is exactly what you need to do. And uh, Carl Ridley has just not been able to rid himself of Dan Downing. <laughs> and Dan, over his part, he's uh, certainly not given up. He's been very, very tenacious then in the 505. Uh, so uh, we'll have to see if this battle continues. But uh, Carl Ridley will be desperate to break away here and start eating into that. Lead.
Yeah, but I don't think you're going to get Cranston 14 seconds up the road. It does seem unlikely. Yeah, it seems unlikely, doesn't it? Uh, VR, VR, I love it there. Logan's put when the engine just blew up and at 31 minutes of repairs. Somehow I downshifted twice. Rob Wolf put up, VR got me as Downing and Ridley are going side by side with Parrish round turn 13 round the oak tree. And Downing and Ridley battling it out. And I believe that's Law, is that you know, it's Neil Rocks in the Clio. And of course the Clios have got faster pace than the Jettas. And they've got currently a massive 32 brake horsepower more, which might not sound a lot, but it's still quite a lot of power. So now that Jetta's going to make the decision, is he going to allow him through? Dallin's going to go, no, I need cover. Please stay there, dear sir. I want you to stay behind me as much as possible. Yeah, so Downing trying to take advantage of this because he has just got back through past Ridley. So as predicted, the battle just continuing. And Dan Downing feels like he's been just constantly looking for Ridley in his mirrors. Oh, this is really helping him out here because look at how much Ridley's being delayed by both of these two. Uh, Clio's. The problem is, is the Clio's are quicker. Mm. That's the thing. The Clio's are quicker. We can see that. Classens is up the right up the order. Romano's up the order. So the, the Jetta is the slower car, but it's who, a lot of it's who it's being driven by, right? So this is a replay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, big oh, hit. Oh, man. A queer. That not is been his day, not, has it? No, and that is a, not a good way of trying to get into the pit lane. I'm sure there is a smoother way of doing it over the grass. He just, oh, he just missed his GR86 as well. Well, that wasn't Ryan Chevalier, was it? Possibly. It, it, it looked the same livery, GR86, didn't it? Yeah. yeah, livery, yellow livery. So it possibly could have been, but blimey, that was close. The Cleos yeah. have cleared downing there's one more cleo to go and that is matty cridland who's just gone up the i know it's marcus law sorry so there there and um jesus amandari has just had a problem going into 13. this race is just so long not fun and i quit who is that from <laughs> as that's Gofferman in the youtube channel let us know who your name is so we can get a rough idea of who you are in the race. Thank you so much, as uh, YouTube names are completely different from real names in iRacing. I thought that was you talking there and you were about to quit there, James. So I was about to commentate in the last 40 minutes on my own, but thankfully not the case there. Really uh, yeah, can you imagine that? <laughs> I have had to do that, believe it or not. I have to do 90 minutes uh, completely on my own and it's a, uh, uh, well, no, I that's... assume not too horrible to listen to, but it wasn't fun to do. Uh, so we look here at uh, the Chetta splitting up Romano and Classens, much to the Benelux uh, driver's satisfaction. But unfortunately, Romano immediately goes up the inside in that uh, clear, which is much faster than the Jetta in a straight line then. Although we'll get a little bit of slipstream then as he tucks in behind, does the number 50. Yeah, I'm also wondering if that is David Johansson in YouTube chat as Goffin Mananen. Wondering, wondering, wondering. 38 minutes on the top, on the clock there. And we've still got Giovanni Romano. I think it is, because he's moaning about the clear. So yeah, be. that's what I'm guessing. That's what, that's what I, I put two and two together. It's okay, <laughs> I've got you. Uh, Giovanni Romano and <laughs> Classens still going here. Stellar job from these guys. You've got to think, though, it is a long time in a car. You are right, but it's what you signed up for. You know, nothing's changed since the sign up forms. You, you, you knew the length and everything else, and it's, it, it is a battle to love what you do in a car that you, you may not have driven before. That's the question. Yeah, I suppose the upshot is you've got plenty of time if you can survive to, to get used to the car. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, uh, as we watch uh, Classens, oh, those those tyres must have cried enough. I don't know how he's not driving on those bald spots. <laughs> We've, we should be down to the rim then on Classens' car by now. <laughs> yeah, you, you should well be, but you're possibly not. So, um, hmm. this could be interesting, I think. Could be very, very interesting. Yeah, uh, demo, meanwhile. 
Yeah, yeah still 6. leading the way. 6.4 second gap to uh, Kevin Parrish then. So, Demar, he's pitting later than everyone else. He's building the gap. It's all going to plan so far. Since uh, Really, since Parrish went off near the start, Demar's not looked particularly troubled. Yeah, I'm trying to see... Martin Pearson second in the MX-5s. I was wondering where he'd gone because he was battling with Vice and Colin Vice is still down in 27th. But Pearson's now up 22, so it's five places up here. Biggest gainer is Austin. No, it's not. It was Austin Tucker in there, but it is now Richard Rosado in the what's he in Toyota GR86. Go Rosado. Uh, in terms of the biggest gain over, I think Lincoln Fox, who's seven places from where he started in the Mazda. Yeah, I think but he... Rosado's 21. Is he? Okay. <laughs> it shows only four. No, it's plus Neil, four, Neil it's Rocks. Rosado. Neil Rocks in the Clio, plus 24. Ah, there we go. Well, that, that settles it now. <laughs> yeah, it does now. Yeah, so, no, but is a Rosado overall uh, that's 24? And that Classens and Giovanni Romano is still having a battle, but Sven Demmel out in front by seven seconds here in that Mustang, doing a stellar job, doing what he needs to do. That's the, the Clio battle that has just been going on for an absolute age here of Giovanni Romano and Tim Classens. And we still think, I still think they've got one more stop to me. I think you're right on that one, James. Also, Grouse on Carl Ridley and Dan Downing is another lockup from uh, Classens again in the uh, just as they go towards the S's. Uh, but uh, Carl Ridley four tenths behind Dan Downing, uh, desperate to get back through as, uh, <laughs> as Romano. He's got to figure out a way oh. through Marcus Moore. Oh, look at look at him. He's back in the race then and now going around the outside of that must be Cridland. Yeah, Matty Cridland. Yeah, Matt Cridland just got overtaken by Marcus Law. That's where Weiss is in the MX-5. That's what made me initially ask, how has Martin Pearson jumped up so many places? Well, that would be how, because these guys are still scrapping it out. And that there is Martin, all on his lonesome. He's got seven behind with Jake, uh, 19 in front with Jelly. And he's just tootling around all on his own. And the only danger he's got is Kevin Parrish, who's coming behind him as a bet marker. Yep, uh, but I'm sure compared to the heat where he was being knocked about all over the place, he's probably quite happy for the beast and quiet for the time being. As you see, Carl Ridley has now gotten himself back past down down in, in that uh, Jetta battle for second. Yeah, great job. Uh, Mike Pearson is doing a stellar job in that MX-5. He's just running along, doing what he needs to do, seeing if Richard can make a mistake. However, Richard's 20 seconds up the road, so if he does make a mistake, he's still going to be very close. David Mitchell is sandwiched between two GR86s at the moment, as Swatson Truba and also, uh, but not Chevalier. I think there's actually a back marker behind that as well. It is Justin McKayla in the other GR86 is sandwiching him in. Mike Pearson on the straight. You can see the speed of the MX-5, 112, 13. Is he going to top 14? Yes. Can we get the 15? No. We end up going back down. So 115 miles an hour in them MX-5s. So still enough power when you're racing through, though. Oh, yeah, certainly more than enough. And it's it's controlling that power through the S's that's probably more of the concern here for Martin Pearson here. As we now switch to this must be the... Is this the law battle, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Starting grid is coming up on your screen. Don't worry, we're a little bit further up than that one. Uh, it's Justin Delano and Harry Fox. Yeah, Delano and Fox is going over the start finish line. That's the 510 Jetta. Uh, that is Duncan Murray, who's got these guys coming up and closing thick and fast. So Duncan Murray's going to have to be a little bit mindful of what's happening. Swatson Truba is into the pits. There's Duncan Murray there. There's the GR86s of Delano Fox. On Augustine Castino, still battling it out. Who's going to take the win? That's going to be the question. Yeah, currently Sharp still got that uh, 2.5 second gap to Tyler Agostino. Agostino kept the gap steady, but he's not making too many inroads. As we see a VW Jetta desperately trying to get out of the way and really holding up Harry Fox here. And this creates an opportunity for Justin Delano. Yeah, that's uh, Duncan Murray. 
this is literally right at this moment in time. It's a sheer panic moment for Murray. He's just, he's trying to get out of the way, but he's got nowhere to go. And they're on a very tight part of the circuit through that snake section. So for Duncan Murray, he's now probably should be lifted off. He did lift it off and allowed Delano to go through, but that lost a little bit of time to Harry Fox in front with Augustano in second up the road. So, yeah, you're going to have to be a bit careful. Carl uh, Ridley is now in a free car fight in the um, in the Jettas with Dan Downing and Eric Manifeld behind him. So Carl Ridley, free car fight in the Jettas coming into the last 30 minutes. And I still think there's at least one more pit stop in this for all of them. Uh, yeah, definitely. And look, here it comes immediately. Manifeld following in Dan Downing into the pit lane. So Manifeld, the Benelux driver, has really worked hard to get himself back into contention, hasn't he? Because he didn't have a great start, did he? He was quite a way behind. He's been slowly chipping away at that gap, lapping about a second lap faster than Ridley and Downing. Oh, well, there you go. That fight that was brewing went and poofed in one foul swoop as they dived into the pits. Now a pit Downing fight, or Manifeld. It? Sorry? It's now a pit fight. It's not gone away. It's going to re-emerge in a, a couple of seconds' time, I think. Yeah, it depends who's going to get the run, though, isn't it? As we sit and keep an eye on these cars. Oh, that Manavell's is jumped in. Manavell. Manavell's jumped in. Down, he's still sat there. He's still sat there. Car's escaping, and he's still sat there for Dan Downing. Oh, dude. Was he nursing damage that we maybe didn't know about? Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Ridley's bolted. He's gone. Yeah, and so uh, is Agard's Manibald. Agard's got through. Manibald's got through. Downing's still sat there. Steve Burns is coming in with him. Is he going to get through as well or Downing? Well, is he is got, has he got a penalty for anything? This is really weird. Why <laughs> would he be in there for a minute 50? So. <laughs> Duncan Murray 42. You know what? That could have been tyres. Ah. Possibly. I'm trying to do some math, but it's there. Uh, but it doesn't matter. The Goldwing boys are out together. So now they should be able to start trying to move forward. So hopefully for them. But Carl Ridley is on his way. He's escaped and is running up the road like a scolded cat here at the moment. Yep, yeah, this is the break that he really needed. All oh, downing around the outside. of Is that Duncan Murray he's fighting with? Yep, yeah, there we go. Yeah, you don't want to be um, fighting with your teammate. Use your teammate to get ahead. That's what you want to do. You don't want to fight with your teammate because what would be the absolute point in that? Oh, and is Colin Vice hit trouble or is he just in the pits at the moment? Uh, no, he's crashed. Oh, there we go. Quite slow over the crest then. And That's Parrish. Oh, he tries to get out of the way. And then Ridley, yeah, or... Yeah, and then just goes back, unfortunately, for Vice. I don't know if that was an incident or he was just trying to get out of the way. The two Goldwing boys are still battling it out. So that's great for them. Uh, Cranstone's got Chris Sofer behind in the GR86. He might be thinking about letting him go, but Classens and Romano still, still going at it here. <laughs> yeah. Just Romano has been absolutely relentless, and Classens, to be fair, has matched him uh, blow for blow all the way. And it really is a case of Romano camp going a, bit, a few laps longer on the fuel. Is that going to save him here? Because we are getting to crunch time in terms of are you going to have to come in for that almost sort of splash and dash near the end, or can you get it to last? We know Classens definitely has to come in at least one more time, uh, but can Romano outfox him? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. They've got 27 minutes to go. And Romano and Classens have not left each other alone. They've tried different pit strategies. Didn't work. They, Romano went in later. Still come out behind. He still caught them back up. And they're still in a battle. So all in all, they're still fighting away, aren't they? That's the thing. And this is going to be a fight that's going to go on till the end. You can see on the left hand side, on the, um, the screen above, of course, at the moment, where the Clio cycle is going through. But the driver's gaps are quite large all the way through every class. 
apart from the Cleos. <laughs> They've just not wanted to leave each other alone. They're just battling on and battling on and battling on. And now, guess what? They're still battling on. Yep. <laughs> and Klassen just continues to abuse those tyres. Uh, and somehow he's able to hold on to that lead then. So the production cars being pushed to that absolute limit and beyond. They've even got a Mazda for company now. So that could be a slight distraction for Klassen. So Romano, looking, he's been close the whole way through, but now this could be another opportunity for him as we see Harry Fox coming into the pits because he was challenging for third, let's not forget, uh, with uh, Chevalier. Do you know and what? Agostino, we've, yeah. Yeah, we've done something here. We've completely missed where Timon Bramley went until I looked in the Discord and his internet cut out. He was leading the MX-5s and right up until 19 and a half laps. And no, there were only six laps back or up from that. But his internet cut out. And oh. Timon Bramley, that's where he went. He, he just disappeared off the side. Of the, <laughs> none of us picked up on it because there was just so much going on. But Timon Bramley, yeah, lost his internet. So unfortunately for him, um, yeah, so Cleo's still fighting it out. The common story for Australian drivers, the internet uh, infamously terrible around there. But uh, that's a shame. Timon wasn't doing anything wrong there. And he had no, things it's pretty it's much under control. Time. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. It's not the first time I've heard about Australian internet unless they're feeding the kangaroo to run in the hamster wheel. <laughs> it does end up dying out quite quickly. I've talked to other Australian drivers. They've compared it to a potato internet uh, several times. <laughs> but, nice. Uh, meanwhile, uh, <laughs> Romano trying to uh, push Clattons into a mistake, but he's been locking up, but not enough to make a mistake here. So that's why he's still held on as we look at Ridley still holding on to second position then so uh, mm. i think mountain belt is pit and ridley and cranston haven't so far in this day yeah there's an interesting little ding dong materializing in 23rd here so far cranston and rosado have been having a little oh he's in the wall oh so far all right well just as i speak and so puts it in off the track so that's not ideal, was it, James? As he just goes and gets it all a little bit wrong, out onto the grass, trying to stop the car, never going to happen. And unfortunately, he's gone round. Um, sorry. Collected there by, was it Cranston, just behind yeah. him immediately? Cranston was trying to, they were, they were having a little battle because they were developing with him and Rosado in the GR86s, and I thought it was going to get spicy. There's the pits. Classen's in, Sharp's in, Agostini's in. And they've got 24 minutes. It's going to be a pit to stop run. And it's going to be seeing if anybody can get to the end. But at the moment, I think that's, what's that, three? It's got, I think it is three, isn't it? Yeah, three pit stops for Classens. As he's on his way out of the pits now. Classens has gone through. Giovanni Romano's gone long again. Now it will be when Le Romano's going to go in as sharp. And Agostino are into the pits. They're coming out what looks like a little bit closer than they want they, when they went in. So that's going to be an interesting development in that one. But let's come on, Giovanni, as we wait for Giovanni Romano to tell us what he's doing in their Cleos. Yep. Uh, it's going to dip. It's, even with that uh, going running as long as he has, he can maybe do five or six more laps than Klassen's now. That's not going to be enough to fill 23 minutes. No. No, but he's got 32 second gap. So it's going to be that gap that he's normally had when he's got in. It's going to be very, very close again, isn't it? I think that's the thing here for Romano. He's, he's going to be very, very close to it once more. So let's see what happens when he goes in. And I'll keep an eye on that one. He's coming down into turn 13. Pearson's in, second in, in at the MX-5. Corporal Richards already in. So these are the one and two in the MX-5. So great job from him. As there is Romano on your screen now. He is, where is he on track? He's going round turn 16, I believe. Yeah, that's uh, about right. So Romano, uh, let's see what his sector times are looking like. Uh, I think at 25 seconds in the first sector. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Claxton's coming out of it's 29.8. And they both, uh, he's at 21-0 in the second sector, 21-1 for Klassens in sector two. 
Yeah, he knows. I think the thing is for Romano, he knows what he has to do. He has been so close, right? Hasn't he? So close after his last two stops. Almost, almost, almost taken the lead. Is this the one he needs? Is Klassen's caught up in enough traffic? He is. He's got gold wing Jettas in front of him and a GR86, right? So Klassen's at the moment is not moving full pace. And Klassen's is a long way back there with Romano into Ooh. the pit lane. So I'll keep an eye on Klassen's and he can't get past the Jettas or the 86s. The 86 is trying to clear the Jetta. Oh, Klassen's. What's Romano going to do? He stopped in the pit lane. Klassen's is dropping down now through the hog pen. Oh, and he hits the 510. I think Romano is on his way. Romano is on his way. Klassen's is coming down. I think Romano might actually get it. The yeah, third Murray's ask could try him. Oh. Uh, Duncan Moraes. He spun him around there, and that's what's really cost him, being held up by both of them. Him and his teammate. Oh, Dan Danny. he's Whoa. the no. The free wide. Briefly. Oh, Romano still didn't do it. And he still got stuck. And now he's at the back end, which makes it even worse. Yeah, it certainly does. And uh, all that, that fuel offset because he didn't stay out longer. Oh, as we see Klassen's make a little mistake there. But because uh, Romano didn't stay out longer, he's not really got the benefit of his strategy here. Uh, although I suppose he thought, well, 22 minutes left to go. I may as well pit because I'm going to be able to make it to the end either way. There's no point just being sitting out and being undercut here by uh, Klassen's. Do you know what's worse? Looking back at that Duncan Murray incident, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of contact, if any. Masson Murray lost it on his own, you're saying? Well, I, I, I wouldn't like to add to that because I'm probably going to get myself... Oh. Yeah. It's very close. Big hit with the tyre ball there as well. I don't know if he even got touched. If there was a touch, it was a very slight one. Yeah. It must have been. Because I don't know if he even got touched. It certainly not helped uh, his race, though. As we see Colin Vise, or oh, not the first time we've seen him around at that point, is it? Mm. But great to see Colin back in the race, though, at least. He's a trier. Go on, Colin. You keep going. Stratton struggling with turn 13 as well. Here's Pearson running second in MX5. Just extending a little bit, but saving it actually. So late in the brakes, but uh, able to keep it on track. Uh, not the same for Marcus Law though, who seems to be trying to cut <laughs> the track. Excuse me, a bit sorry. lost here. I'm sorry. There we go. Swatson Struber is back on. We're going to have a look at a couple of replays here. George Gruber. Ooh. Oh dear. And wasn't he on the podium up until recently as well? Because that's put Chase it's Brown into fate. It's got to be a disconnect of some sort or a VR He's issue. He's straight for the porter potty there. Maybe he needs a loo. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just thinking that, yeah. yeah. He needs to go to the toilet. Oh. Cool. Is that call for? That's is, the lead yeah. of the MX-5. No, it looked like a Toyota. Uh, but call for was the leader, yes, in MX-5. It was Michaela. Uh, still got, oh, he's still got 21 seconds over Pearson. Yeah, only one the Clio's got past there, so not a big loss. It's very a... close, though. Look. Oh, stop. Oh, I bet call for was sitting there going, please stop, like, right now. <laughs> Where are you going to stop now? You spun. It, it is like literally Russian roulette when you get behind a car that's spinning randomly out of control. It really is. It's just there's no way for you to be able to go. It's just a spin of Russian roulette all the time. The car's getting very spread out now. The lead so far. We'll give you a quick rundown of the order in the classes. Sven Demmel is out in front front and he's opened up a lead now to nearly 9.8 seconds an incredible job from him over Kevin Parrish here so Parrish taking the win in race one not able to do that in race two
Klassen's in the Clio with Giovanni Romano. Well, Romano taking the win in race one with Klassen's. They're now taking, looking to try and hold on to the win in race two. And Dave Mitchell, who's got a third place and is more than happy about that. In the GR86s, Andrew Sharp never really looked under pressure at all. Tyler Agostino and Justin Delano have now only just started separating by three and a half seconds. That was a lot closer in a battle that was developing there as well. Corfor and Pearson. Pearson looks like he's into the pit lane um, as well. Martin Pearson. No, he's still out on track. So I'm not entirely sure why um, I've got something else different showing. But Lincoln Fox is in third. And then in the VW Jetta, it is Jake Cranston and Eric Mannenfeld with Kyle Ridley, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Agard and Dan Downing and Steve Barnes. Of course, Dan Elning had that very long pit stop. He did, didn't he? So great to see him still uh, competing. As we look at Carl Smith in the MX-5, Dan in fifth. And is that just turn one he's looped it around at? Okay, well, more updates. Mr. Gruber. Well, that's P3 gone. The VR Quest ran out of juice, causing a power outage earlier, killed the charging cable. Another one with VR issues. That is the drawback, isn't it? <laughs> with this new technology. It the thing is, it doesn't advertise VR very well, does it? When they can't get through an hour and 40 minute race. No, it's, it's not that long in the scheme of things. Especially Imagine them you... trying to do a six-hour endurance. Exactly, yeah, and people do do that. By the way. <laughs> Romano, by the way, now he's supposed to get to Classens to three temps then, so it's still game on in the Clio Cup. Mm. But Demel, 10 seconds out of Parish. Got to say, it's looking very, very good so far. 15 minutes just to go with the sun setting. Looks like uh, Parish's chances are starting to fade as well. Yeah, I don't think unless Demel runs into some serious problems... I don't think he's going to be able to get there. I think Parrish is going to stay where he is. He's got really no other option. I don't think he's going to be able to go through on demo. But I tell you what, if we can pick up on that Clio battle, please, Mr. Producer, sir. It's getting very spicy with Classens and Romano. And they're going at each other, coming through this snake section. And for one minute, Romano literally had his nose as close to the back end of Classens as he could possibly get it. And now they're still going to proceed to keep going through nine and down through South Bend into the oak tree and it could be out of the oak tree going into 13 that these guys end up swapping places yeah to me it feels like Romano is just closing up trying to force Classens into a mistake trying to break the Benelux driver essentially but uh, so far all uh, Classens has been using is uh, breaking late as possible and then getting on the power as early as possible uh, and now they've got an MX-5 in the way so they need to make sure they don't trip up over him. Which we've seen already. That's mm. Chris Sewell. Oh dear. <laughs> yes. well, actually, with the same drivers, wasn't it? Oh, pretty much. They both get well oh, out of the got way. Him long. Lock up. Oh, Classens. He's managed to come out there. Do you know what? Praise to them backmarkers there, because that could have been a lot worse. They caught him right going into 13. A that horrible Cranston place. Just got out of the way there as well. Um, we'll see in the Jetto, isn't it, for Jake Cranston? No, it wasn't Jake. It was Jeremy Agard. Oh, yeah, of course. Cleared. That of Olivier. Yeah. yeah, so it's now left the two Clios to go once more and fight it out. And this has just been incredible. That an hour and 26 minutes in, and they've still not left each other alone. It's been amazing. Yeah, and while we're watching this, there is also a uh, battle for brewing for second in the Toyota GR86 class. Agostino, 1.7 ahead of Justin Delano, who is just a second ahead of Harry Fox. Harry Fox has really been charging. 2 minute 50.7 last lap around. Whereas Delano in the 51s, Agostino in the 52s. Well, there we go. Lots of battles are coming in. And where are we on pit stops, do we think? That's going to be the question. Uh, I think it's a similar situation for all of these three 86s it's going to be tight towards the end i think i'm trying to remember who pit first i'm pretty sure Classens. it was Classens. romano goes one lap longer 
Yeah, in terms of the Renault Clears, I thought you meant the Toyotas, but yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, it, to, to be honest, I think it doesn't really matter which way it's going to, which class we talk about, are they going to have to pit again? They pitted on lap 25, 24, and 26. That was for their third stop, mind you. Oh, another fast. I think Fox was the last to pit out of this group. Uh, and so they Agostino, to me, looks like he's fuel saving a little bit, which is why he's been caught so rapidly here. Yeah, so they're going eight laps. So if you work out 26, 24, that's lap 32. That's in a minute. Oh, Harry Fox just for, about staying on track there. <laughs> yeah, for Delano, that is literally in a minute that he's going to have the, the end of the next lap. Yeah, so crunch time then for the uh, Toyotas here. I don't think this is done. Tim Klassen's the same, 26 laps, and he's had three stops. So, nine, eight, and 20, it's bordering eight and a half, nine laps. So that would be 26, that's 35. So he's got three laps to do in 15 minutes. That's easily done when they're running around the 248s. So I don't think this is finished. As we can see, Logan Warfield back out on circuit after his engine blown up and then goes and visits the toilet. <laughs> Warfield Logan, spinning <laughs> not in the field. a good one, mate, is he? <laughs> Neither has Zofa, to be honest. He waits 30-odd yeah. minutes, comes out of the pits, and then, unfortunately, um, goes and spins the car up. So, poor Logan. Yeah. His downfall continues. I feel a bit for Stratton as well. He was recovering well, and there's been a bit of chaos, but he's not really got anywhere near close to the back of Damon Mitchell, and uh, that's a big shame for the Belgian, because I think he would have hoped to at least get on the bottom step of the podium here after all the chaos that's happened. Look like at this. Delano all over the back of Agostino, but is he in a light car here as uh, the it's, light starts to fade in the background? Be. It's got to be in a light car. It, it has to be, because we're working out that he's eight. It's eight laps, right? So for Tyler Agostino, 26. But is Delano's... Agostino going to defend down the straight here? That's the big question. I think Delano might have to go in soon. I think he might have to go in and then Agostino might try, if he saved enough fuel to get to the end, he might manage to hold on, but it's going to be very, very close. <laughs> well, let's see, let's hope the, the strategists uh, know what they're doing here as Delano climbs all over the curves, all over, and his attempts to snatch second position here. Here he goes! Fact, it's Delano that comes in. Yeah, on oh, cue. Ooh, and it's like Harry Fox following him, so it looks like Harry Fox wasn't last to pit. <laughs> it was Agostino. Agostino is on lap 26. Shut up on 26. That so could be a possibly two more laps. Could be splashing dashes for these guys as well. Ooh, so... Romano still right behind Classens, by the way. 0.24 seconds. Yeah, they're going to be closest to who's got a pit here as well. I think the splashing dashes to come. I really think there is. I don't think they've managed to save enough fuel. Yeah, I think Romano made the earlier stop in the last stint because he knew, as, even if he extended as much as possible, he wasn't going to be able to get to the end doing one stop less. So he may as well minimise the time loss and just sort of shadow what uh, Classens was doing. But unfortunately, as you say, he came out behind. And he's not really been able to dictate the pace like he would have wanted to. Parrish is in. That means Demel's got to come in, surely. Demo was extending, let's not forget. Nine, eight minutes well, to go. He's 27. There's no need to risk it, though, because Demo did have a big lead. Yeah, but this is bringing everybody in together, isn't it? There's Parrish in the pits. He's gone out now. Turn 13 for the Cleos of Classens and Romano. Chase Brown in as well from third. Miguel mm. Torres is only about 26 seconds now behind Chase Brown. So Torres has stayed in this one. Wow. This is getting spicy as we get into the last 15 minutes. Who's going to get this one? Is there splashing dashes to come for Classens and Romano? Is Sharp and Agostini going to have to go in there? Uh, Delano? Hold Delano on. came out behind Harry Fox. Yeah, and Harry Fox is now about half a second behind Chevalier, who I'm Ooh. sure has to pit again. I think Chevalier's got to pit again. Harry Fox has jumped Delano. Classens is still, I still think Classens and Romano have got to go in. 
That to me says so Stilano's put on fresh tyres then for this final stint. Well, I would have done, to be honest, if he's come out a little bit behind him. Keeping an eye on the Clio boys as they're coming round the last few corners. Is somebody going to peel in or are they going to go one more and then peel in? Romano's got the option of going one lap later. They are going to go, keep going. Yeah, they're getting a nice this toe. Be really close. Really close if they're going to hold on to this one. Yeah, and uh, you never know. Romano might just be staying behind Classens, just lifting earlier into some of these corners to save fuel as well. Not that the he, he's got that the option. Powerful, but, yeah. Hasn't he? He's got the option too. You know what I mean? He's got the option. That's Chevalier on your screen. We think Chevalier's got to go in as he's coming around the final couple of corners. I'm expecting him to peeling this time. But we'll keep an eye and see if Chevalier does, of course. Oh, it's, see there, that's the Jeddahs currently on the screen. That's Jeremy Agard and Eric Manenveld. They're scrapping down in the Jeddah situation. That's got Dan on in, in the pit. Steve Burns is in the pits in the Jeddahs. Manenveld here with Jeremy Agard battling away for the last podium. The Cleos again. From, uh, this is where are they on track they're coming down into the oak tree here Edward it's gonna be wow five minutes to go can anybody hang this out do we think I think Romano is gonna try I could see Classen's coming in though out of these two uh, and I think Demo 53 seconds to Parish. surely it's worth coming in is he though the problem is for Classen he's been leading right so he hasn't had a whole lot of time to lift at coast or anything like that with uh, Romano so close behind him. So if anybody's using more fuel, it's going to be Classen's. As we go to a replay here of Swatson Struberg coming into 13. Your back end's coming around, son. There we go. <laughs> Too light. He's blocking the track as well. Oh, yeah, but he had nowhere to go. If he went backwards, you can guarantee that Goldwing car was going to go around the back end of him. And if he went forward, you were going to guarantee the Goldwing car was going to go in front of him. So either way, he's, he was going to be struggling, stuck between a rock and a hard place. But these Cleos still fighting it out once more. There's a very beat up Logan Warfield in front who had an engine blow up because he's double shifted and, and dropped down the order. Had 35 minutes of repairs due to using his one fast repair. So now it's all about what's happening here. Warfield's car. Is Looks like he's been in both a war and a field. Yeah, it, it probably has, to be fair. He's probably dug up some grass on the way through. He's joined a couple of barriers. He's had a bit of a moment with an engine. He, he probably blew the bumper off when he blew the engine up. <laughs> yeah, and he's even started to hold up Tim Classen's a little bit through the final sector here. As they, there's an opportunity to pit here. Will Tim Classen's take it? No, they stay no. out another lap. Four minutes to go then. But this could really be do or die for Romano. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on, on where Demel is on the racetrack as well, due to the fact that, obviously, your leader is coming round the bottom end. He's round the roller coaster at the moment. So Demel doing a great job. Ooh. He's going to have at least one on one more. And Mantidvel passed Agard for third in the Jetta VW Cup. Oh, it's all going off here, and we're going to have to do some maths and everything. Don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's too complicated for me. You, you don't like the way that the world time. works in terms of maths. Hey, have you, have you seen commentators trying to do maths on the fly? It, it <laughs> never works. We always end up getting it wrong somehow. Uh, well, as we go on board with Chase Brown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're entertainers. We're not mathematicians, but we'll do our best and. You would be so upset if you were Classens or Romano coming in for a splash and dash at the end. Oh, Manivel, no. No. What has he been up to? There we go. Agard pit then. Agard, Agard pit. Agard in the background pit. Yep. Agard went in. So. Ooh, Classens right behind Romano. Yeah, he is so slow. Slower than what he looks like. Romano did pass Classens. Yeah, is that Classens trying to desperately save fuel then to get to the end? 
could well be. We can have a look. We can try and find the overtake. That would be awesome. And uh, we'll see where Romano got past Classens. I think Classens is trying to minimise the, the fuel intake. I think he's very, very close to whether or not he's going to make this. There's going to be one more lap. I, th I think if he's running out, he's going to be out after this lap because it's possible as well. The thing is, what do you do? You've got, a, to be fair, you've got a 41 second gap over Damon Mitchell. So you could go in, splash and dash and come out. That's how it happened. Oh, he's fighting back up the inside. Yeah, that's the replay of how Romano got through. Yeah. That was through turn 13. <laughs> So, as I like it, Ed's getting all really excited there. It was a replay of him going back through. Now we're coming, they're coming around the last couple of corners. What I would do if I was Classens, if I was that close to fuel, go in and get it done. Because you're not going to lose second place. Second is better than running out of fuel on track. But he isn't. He's going round again. Wow. He thinks he can save enough fuel. It must be really marginal then in the cockpit of that 202. So Klassen's the Benelux driver, just absolutely risking it here, hoping he can lift and coast in the slipstream of Romano. And maybe a mistake from Romano could give him the win here. You never know. So maybe staying out could be the right decision. Maybe it could backfire horribly and end with uh, Klassen just stationary by the side of the circuit here. We'll know in the next 40 seconds or so. Let's put it into perspective. Devil's starting the fastest lap, right? He's starting the last lap now. He's Devil not pitting started, as well. No, he's not pitted. So Devil is starting the last lap. Classens and Romano are on the top side of the circuit coming through the snake. So they're going to have one and one more. The only way they can avoid that one more is by letting Demol overtake them. But they're too far ahead of Demol to allow that to happen. And there's so too many got cars to go in between again. as well. Uh -huh. There's too many cars in between as well that yeah. Demol will have to lap and get past. Yeah, but... Classens now, if he is really holding on to fuel, he's holding on desperately. As this is Gary Brown, what have you been up to? Oh, turn 13, it goes right there, dear sir. Overshoots his breaking point and lifts out the way, but Classens is still there. Final lap of the race, Demo is coming through the snake, so we don't have to quite worry about where he is, but we do have to worry about where Classens is gonna be in conjunction with his fuel. He's, uh, Romano's gone through, Mara Romano went for a lap of go through turn 13. And now, has Klassen's got enough? That's gonna be the question, isn't it? Yeah, Chase Brown is also within nine tenths of Miguel Torres, who's got himself back onto the podium there. So that's another very, very close fight in the Mustang class. But yeah, now it is Romano going through 13, his turn to lock up the class ends trying to apply maximum pressure has he got enough fuel to the end he's going to go absolutely risking it here for the final few corners james yeah but he, he one more doesn't lap. matter he's still got one more lap to go because devil's behind them so devil's on the final lap but they're not exactly they, yeah they've got one more to go so yeah he's still devil's still coming up through 16 and 17 at the moment yeah, so these guys have got to go again. So, yeah. Very... Let's hope they realise that. <laughs> well, let's hope they do. If they pull over directly to the left and quit back, they're not going to finish the race, but... Surely... He's, oh, in. he's in! Classen's in! He had to splash and dash. Romano going that one lap longer didn't have to. So Romano's got one more lap in the belt. And that is it. I knew they weren't finished because they just wasn't. Demol's coming around the last couple of corners, by the way, as so we picked up on him. But they, he had to go in and he had to splash and dash. The question is, is he, is he going to get out before Demol laps him? And Demol wins. Yep, Demol takes the victory over here in the 100-minute in the, um, race there. So great job from Demo in the Mustang, taking the victory. So a great job from him. But uh, Sven Demo taking the victory there with Parrish in second. And it looks like Miguel Torres should 
hang on to that third spot. And then in the Clio's, well, we now know it's going to be Romano. Classens is going to finish. He has finished because he got lapped in the pits. So Classens is finished. It should finish in second with Mitchell in third. And did Agostino. Have to do a last minute splash and dash because Agostino, I think, is going to win in a GR86 class. Yeah, Sharp had to go in as well. On lap 35. So Sharp's lost it on the final lap in the GR86s. Yeah, Chevalier wow. amazingly gets second as well. Yeah. This is... If this is where they're going to be for each of these races, right, it's going to make it very interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. Jake Cranstone's going to come over and win the Jettas. And he's going to win by 35 seconds of Cranstone taking the victory in the first Jetta there. But this is Giovanni Romano, who's going to take the victory in the Clio's. He's on his run down through 17D currently. So, yeah, Corfor wins the MX-5s. Pearson takes second. Fox is going to take third. And then in the Jettas, Cranstone's going to win with Ridley and Maneveld. So, great job from Maneveld there. As Jake Cranstone comes over the line, takes that victory from him. Well done to Jake, taking the Jetta victory. So, a stellar job from him. Uh, Giovanni Romano's just coming around the final corner. There he is. Pulled it out with that one. One lap of fuel we saved over the last pit stop. One lap later. I can guarantee he probably has not got enough to get himself back to the pits. But, yeah. Wow. That is... Could yeah. be very, very interesting. Yeah, what a battle that was between uh, Romano and Classen's pretty much the whole way through. But mm. here's your results, then, James. Sven Demmel takes the win in the Mustangs with, my, with Paris in second and Torres in third. Jace Brown in fourth with Mickey Fritzen in fifth. Jeff Andrews in sixth. Austin Tucker seventh. Emerson Golden in eighth. George Gruber ninth who run um, VR. And Ron Wolf, who I believe also, was he the internet or the VR? I'm trying to find out which one he was there. But uh, there we go. In the Clio, Giovanni Romano does take the victory over Tim Classens and Damon Mitchell. That's your one, two, three with Jelly, but, but Jelly Verstraffen in fourth. Marcus Law in fifth. Neil Rocks in sixth. Matty Crickland in seventh. David Johannesson is finished in eighth, 18 laps down. And Akron Zabnoni in 31 laps down in ninth. In the GR86s, Agostino wins the GR86 was with Ryan Chevalier in second. Andrew Sharp pitted on the final lap. Had to go over a special dash, put himself down into third. Justin Delano managed to stay in fourth. Harry Fox in fifth. Adam Swatson Struba in sixth. Ricardo Rosado seventh. Chris Sofa eighth. Gary Brown ninth. And Patrick Reed down in tenth. On from that one is Justin Michaela and Brooks Clayton. So. Great job from everybody, really, who's finished. In the MX-5, Richard Corfraw took the victory. Martin Pearson in second. Lincoln Fox in third. Christopher Rowe in fourth. Then we have Carl Smith, Colin Vest, Chris So, Logan Warfield, who just had an absolute horrendous race. Timo Brandley, whose internet went. And then Edouard Aguirre, who, as we saw, plummeted into the wall there. So he's down in temp. Uh, in the Jettas, it was Cranstone taking the win. We got Ridley second, Eric Manaveld in third. Jeremy Agard in fourth. Steve Burns fifth. Dan Downing down in sixth in the end. Duncan Murray seventh. Jesus Amandari in eighth. Andy Fox and Sam Van Oxt. You're rounding out your top ten. So there we go. All right. So we're going to jump over into the interview room to see if we can get a chat with some of these drivers as it's been a very interesting evening. And don't forget VIR Grand Course. This week we go off to Lebanon in, uh, in the Sunday the 24th. Alton Park International on the 7th and Oshersleben is the final one there as well. So a great job from all of these guys. We're going to jump over into the interview room to see if we can have a chat with some of these drivers. All right. 
Let's see if anybody's going to be coming in and having a chat with us once more. Uh, we'll see what's happening and who is going to be first on the list here. And see who got on. But you've got to think that was just an absolute stellar race from all of them, right? They, they've done an incredible job. They dealt with 100 minutes of racing at a very tough circuit, didn't they? This is the thing. It wasn't easy, this circuit. It was a tough one. And it was tough for these guys to contend with here, Ed. Yeah, especially the ones who were clearly not as experienced in endurance races. get to the end which is an achievement in of itself uh but uh, but yeah i think all of our winners demel had an amazing race in the mustang mm. the cleos there was that freeway fight and uh, the two-way fight between romano and classens that ended with the fuels uh the toyotas it was decided on the field as well they got to feel a bit for andrew sharp who had that small but decent buffer to agostino but in the end agostino managed the fuel out a little bit better than the mazda's core four eating pearson pearson remember who retired almost in the heat uh, ended up finishing second, uh, did the Kiwi uh, driver. So great job by Martin Pearson. And then the Jettos were Cranston, really not being challenged all the way, and Ridley uh, finishing runner-up a distant 43 seconds in arrears. Yeah, we're going to have a chat with Richard first, the man who takes two podiums this evening. He got a second in race one in the MX-5. He got a first in race two in the MX-5 because Bramley's internet decided enough was enough for this evening. But we aren't going to take that away from him. But we are going to welcome him into the booth. Richard, welcome in, buddy. How are you? Hi, mate. Yeah, really pleased. Yeah, it was a shame about Simon's internet. I wondered what happened. Um, he was clearly the fastest driver today. But he... he um. He was pitting slightly earlier, so he was going to be really close at the end. So I was, I was wondering how it was going to shake out, but we were denied that. Yeah, we was. Unfortunately, the internet's a wonderful thing when you all go online and do this wonderful job that we do here in this sim racing world. Okay, so let's discuss race one first, right? Now, I love the, I love the fact that there's a 15-minute sprint qualifying as such beforehand. It did get a little bit chaotic in race one for you guys. Yeah, it was crazy. Like, uh, the track is just kind of one big chicane. Um, I couldn't... Simon was being probably sort of held up a few seconds up the road. I couldn't really get to him. And then I realised that I had a lot to lose. Like, if you if you spin out in that qualifier, you know, I was probably like running on a 15th overall. And if you spin out and then you have to start the main race in 50th, you know, you're, you're screwed, right? So yeah. I had I had three GR86s having a big race behind me. And I just, I just pulled over at some point and let them through. Yeah. Uh, just to just to save my own bacon. Is that airing on the side of caution? Would you say? I'd say that's been a wimp, well and truly. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. But look, listen. At the end of the day, you finish the race, took second place. Then we go into this hundred-minute feature race. Pit stops are plenty. Not quite sure how many you guys were going to need. It looks like some got away with three, some ended up with four. When did you know what strategy you were going to be on? Was it just straight at the beginning? You're like, right, I'm going to do three. I'm going to do four. What was the situation for you? Well, I hadn't, I hadn't done as much practice as I should. I think others were probably in that boat as well. But I checked on uh, VRS and it was like I was bang on eight laps for fuel. And um, then when I did a bit of fag packet math, I suddenly realized that was going to come up just short. I think we needed two nine lap stints probably. So mm. the first one, it's just really difficult because it's so hectic. You're not really thinking about fuel saving. I was just trying to keep alive. But... Once we got into the second stint, I think I picked up, I can't remember who it was, I think I had a Clio in front, uh, and he was just the perfect pace for me, just to carry me along, but I could save loads of fuel, and I got that extra lap. Um, and then in the third stint, I just had to find someone to do something similar again, and managed to get it, so it worked out, yeah, three stops instead of four. No, for international stop. viewers, by the way, Richard was talking about uh, doing maths on the back of a cigarette packet. Yes. That's right. Now Napkin maths is another way of putting it. <laughs> That's what, you know, we gave up trying to do maths there, to be honest with you, Richard. We were just seeing how it all planned out. Going forward, though, very interesting concept that you put together. You know, some interesting circuits as well. Are we going to see the same kind of fuel strategy conundrums at each race circuit, do we think? I would have thought so, because the fuel is just going to last just under 25 minutes, I think, for, mm. for most classes. I mean, on... 
I think the I was speaking to some of the GR86s I was in chat with, and I think they've got slightly less fuel than us. Um, obviously, here on a big track, everyone had to come and sort of pit on the same lap. It was hard to get an extra lap on other tracks. It might be a bit different. So we'll see. It'll be very interesting, and it certainly could be interesting on those slightly smaller tracks with 50 to 60 cars. But you are you are chucking them at Alton Park. Um, you know. we, yeah, we did a poll, and that was the everyone wanted to do it. So uh, I can't be blamed if it goes wrong. No, you can't. Definitely not there, dear Sarah, as well. Richard, thank you very much for joining us there, buddy. Anyone you want to shout out before we let you go? Uh, put two shouts. One to my old team, FTR Esports, and anyone's watching. And one to my new team, RPM Racing. That was my debut for them tonight. So it's a good start. Absolutely. Two podiums at the second and a first. Great job, Richard. Well, we look forward to seeing how you get on at Lebanon in two weeks' time. Cheers, mate. See you then. Take care. Congrats, Richard. Right, now we're going to have a chat with the man who did take a double victory by my calculations in the Clio's. First in race one, first in race two. He had just enough fuel in race two. Let's see how much he had left because I don't think he had enough to get back to the pits if he had to do that. Giovanni Romano, welcome here, buddy. Hey, what's, how's it going? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Ah, feeling pretty good. It was a good day today. How much fuel did you have when you crossed the line in race two? Uh, a liter. Oh. <laughs> Where was you on your strategy in race two, though? Because race one, it's a great race, race one, it is, but it's very hectic, right? You, you try and take what you can get. It's almost like a lottery, especially with the interclasses are mixed um as well they're not even separated by class on the the pace lap so race one was a bit of a lottery you come through and take the win race two a little bit more strategic isn't it you've got to be a little bit more mindful yeah i had uh definitely more strategic i had pre-calculated that there was a chance that because of how fast sven is that he would and helps that he's my teammate so i have <laughs> You can tell me how many laps he was expecting to do. You <laughs> uh, might be able to push 36 laps. So I knew that I would have to do at least eight laps in each stint to make that work. Or So I had to. So what I did for the first stint is I, stre I stretched it to eight laps. Uh, and the rest of the Clios can only do seven because that super long pace lap uh, takes a good chunk out of fuel out of the tank. So I. Took my time in the first stint and just did a lot of saving and managed to stretch it to eight. Yeah, well, you, you did a great job there, buddy. Didn't really leave Tim Classens alone, did you? You guys were battling it out. You guys were constantly together. There was David Johansson in there as well. It's going to be... I think if you guys carry on, I'm not sure if David Johansson is, is going to finish off the season, but between you and Tim... It's going to be a great season, isn't it? Yeah, we were definitely very close. The differentiator was the fuel. Uh, I was pushing in the last stint there, especially to keep on his bumper because I knew he might be short and I didn't want to give him the opportunity to save that extra lap. So, And uh, I dove it up the inside with a few laps left because I noticed he was lifting into Oak Tree a lot. So I... Mm. Uh, took advantage of it to get track position just in case he managed to eke the fuel out. But uh, yeah, it was, it, I think it'll be interesting all season for sure. Yeah, I fully agree with you as well on that one. Uh, Giovanni, anyone you want to shout out before we let you go, buddy? Uh, yeah, shout out to Hugh Jess. Uh, we had a great showing today, uh, won three classes. So uh, congrats to them. And yeah. yeah. Awesome stuff, well, buddy. We'll see how you get on in two weeks' time. It's going to be an interesting one. Thanks, guys. Congrats, Giovanni. Right. Next up, we'll have a chat with Sven Demel, the winner in the Mustang. Sven, welcome in, dear sir. How are you? Hey, I'm, I'm great. Uh, we won three classes today uh, out of five. So <laughs> that's obviously feels, feels really good. Uh, we had a strategy planned from the start and it worked out. So, yeah, feels feels good, man. Yeah, Giovanni just told me that you were keeping them all updated on how many laps you were going to do in that Mustang. A little bit of insider knowledge for your team. Yeah, I mean, that was really important for uh, both Tyler and uh, Giovanni uh, because they ha both had a... I mean, Gio had a fuel advantage on Tim and he needed that to secure the win. And 
Well, Tyler didn't have an advantage on Andrew, but Andrew didn't realize that he didn't have to pit again and I was coming to pass him. So he kind of gave that win away. <laughs> but yeah, it was, yeah. it was really important that we worked together for this one. Yeah, it's always hard though, isn't it? Because he doesn't know for Andrew whether or not you were going to get him. Obviously, you know, when you're trying to, you're trying to do maths on the fly in the car driving, it's always difficult, right, isn't it? You know, I'm, I'm sat down in a chair and I still can't do maths up here in the booth either because I couldn't work out where anybody was, to be honest. I wasn't even sure if you were going to have to go in again. But it's always difficult when you've got that car, for, like Sharp is there and he's debating whether or not he's got to go in, whether or not he's, he can, get, can he hang on? Are you going to overlap him? Yeah, maybe he threw the win away, but it was always going to be tough. And I think for you going forward, though, you and Parrish seem very similar on pace. I think it could be an interesting season for you guys. Oh, yeah, for sure. Kevin is really quick. And uh, we had a tough race in the sprint race. It was a nice battle. Um, but obviously, with all the fuel saving going on in the feature race, uh, we didn't really have a reason to battle. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be fun for uh, the rest of the season. And when my uh, one of my teammates, Alex Koffert, can join us for the next one, he also has the pace. That would be a good fight. And we mm -hmm. had other quick Mustangs in here. We're just a tiny bit too slow um, today, but I'm sure they they can uh, yeah take part in the battle as well. So it should be good. Yeah, I got a funny feeling we're going to have a great Mustang battle. And to be honest, the way the Clios were going at it, and the GR86s, and the MX5s, and the Jettas, I don't think there's any one class that's going to be running away with, to be fair. But yeah, thank you so much, Sven, for joining us there, buddy. Anyone you want to shout out before we let you go? Yeah, my teammates, uh, of course, who are always, always helpful and entertaining during races like this one. Because to be honest, it was a bit bit long in, in the middle there when not much happened and we were just cruising along and it's always good to have your teammates there to talk about stuff and um, make the long long races feel a little bit shorter. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sven, thank you so much for joining us there, buddy. Look forward to seeing how the season goes for you and we'll see you in two weeks' time. Thanks for having me. All right, next up is let's have a chat. We have Tyler Agostino here, lucked in to the GR86 win. I'm sure he won't mind me telling him that, but he did get two podiums out of two. Tyler, welcome in, buddy. How are you? I'm as surprised as you are, to be perfectly honest. That was uh, quite the finish to that 86 race. The worst thing is, I just had Sven up in the booth, and Sven had said that Andrew didn't have to actually pit because he was coming around to lap him before he went into the pits. He's right. He would have taken the white mm. flag, I guess, afterwards, but he would have been the only one really to start that lap because I would have taken checkered. So he didn't need to finish that lap. He just needed to start it. And I just, I think he didn't realize that and thought it was going to go one more and pitted for fuel. And by the time Sven got around him and he was shown that white flag, it was too late. Yeah, it was, unfortunately, for him. But for you, not a bad evening, was it? No, I'm happy with how I drove. I, I've uh, you know, been looking at the schedule here, and I, I figure that VIR at a, out of everywhere is where I'm going to feel most comfortable. So um, happy to keep it pretty clean, happy to, to have a pretty satisfying race, even if I, I did luck into the win overall. What are we going to say then that the next three rounds going to be tough for you? Um, I think so. I, I think it's uh, going to be a little bit of learning, at least at, at Leiden on. Um, that's that's going to be a totally new track for me. But uh, mm. this is my most comfortable car. It's why I picked it for the series. So uh, hopefully I'm only adjusting to one thing at a time and, and continue to perform well. Well, there so you did an absolutely stellar job taking two podiums out of two there as well. Anyone you want to shout out before we let you go, buddy? Uh, just the rest of the HJ guys. Uh, I'm really proud to see us all uh, doing really well in our classes. Uh, we, we had a good showing today and managed to pull three wins out of it. So yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome stuff. Well, thank you so much, Tyler, for joining us, everybody. Let's see how you get on and let on in two weeks' time. Thanks so much, guys. All right. And the final interview of the evening is somebody I know rather well, the Australian himself, Carl Ridley. Carl, welcome, everybody. How are you? Good morning, James. How are you going? <laughs> I'm all right, mate. Not bad. How are you? Yeah, good. Uh, pretty happy with my P2 today. Didn't, didn't quite have the pace, but I'm 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 happy with the P2. Happy? Uh, yeah. Um, Cranston did too good in the sprint race, and 
time we, uh, you know, it was time to grid up. He had good old gap, and without the draft, he was gone. So mm. just battled down. Knew I had to save a lap of fuel each lap or each stint, sorry, which in a Jetta with a dual clutch, you know, or diesel and everything, it's not the easiest thing to achieve, but we got it done. And yeah, just a quiet P2 because I knew all the guys around me had to do an extra pit stop. So I was just chilling. <laughs> I was a little short on the last. I did think the race was going to go one lap short. Mm. So last two laps, I lost 20 seconds to Jake, just saving as much as I could. But other than that, it was a good day. And I'm, it's awesome to have all the classes back out here. Yeah, it, it was very manic for us up here in the booth, right? As you can imagine, with this amount of cars and uh, this amount of cars and classes to run through. But where, where in conjunction in Jettas, now the, the thing is with Jettas, they've got the lowest horsepower, the slowest cars, but then you've got the likes of you and Jake behind the wheel who can mix it up with some of the faster classes in the MX-5s and the 86s in front of you. So where do you think that leaves you within the standards itself? Going forward, are you always going to be looking that you're never just going to be battling your own class? Oh, back when the Jetta was in like in officials, we would always be racing the slower MX-5s and Toyotas, even sometimes Mustangs, if it was a low R driver. But obviously everyone here had been pretty good. It's always a challenge to try and get the fastest classes. Kind of like, a, you know, out, out race our own class and try and take them. Mm. But uh, we, funny enough, we're better on the straights um, compared to the Toyota and outright on with the MX-5. We might have the lower horsepower, but we've got more torque and much less airway so we can a better gear gearbox so we can just get get it moving quicker but yeah, it's funny because they always destroy us in the corners so are, are you saying then we are going to see you mixing up with our faster classes over this season absolutely um you know me and jake almost well jake got 23rd outright and i got 26 so you know we can definitely be fighting for top 25s i feel like that's a easily achievable goal each week we'll just have to wait and see well, that's going to be a very interesting one for you there, Carl. Anyone you want to shout out before I let you go, buddy? I just want to thank everybody at FTR who put all this together. It's not easy to get 50 cars, 10 or 5 classes all together on the same track. So good on them for doing it. I'm loving it. I want to thank yourself, James and Edward, for the commentary. Cannot be an easy job. <laughs> so a really big thanks. <laughs> and I want to thanks to all my friends and family who are watching. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Well, thanks so much there, Carl, for tuning in, buddy. And I'm sure I will talk to you soon, no doubt. No worries. Bye. Take care, mate. Well, there you go, Ed. First round done. We, we were both a bit worried about it, how it was going to go, the amount of cars, the amount of classes. But to be fair, it wasn't quite as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. They, they handled it well, these guys. Oh, only you could see an excellent race like that and your response is disappointment, James. <laughs> no, I'm not, no I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not disappointed because I... It all should have crashed out. Is that, no, is that I think that was the, the thing is, I think that was the thing. And it was even Rich, who was running the series, even said in an announcement right near the beginning that um, it said... Um, so da, 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 I, so we were talking they were talking about the fact that we were coming in to do it James felt no, 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 for five classes we're going to free up in the booth completely agree with the sentiment and I apologise for the chaos he will be tasked with interpreting the racing even yeah, I guess fair enough. the man who put it together up to that description. Yeah. <laughs> no it didn't and it well, was maybe the heat bit, yeah, yeah I'm, do we see no, we can't even see rain that's the rascal thing because some of these cars don't have rain in their remit so we're not going to see rain doing a rain dance all day James. I, it must be mate, exhausting. I, I know i've got still got another one to go i'm hoping there might be rain but i've got a funny feeling it's gem fours at uh, mo, most sports so it's definitely not going to happen but look for us that was an experience right going forward over the next three rounds there's 60 cars registered there's 60 drivers so if all 60 get on track at ledman it's going to be an interesting one again Yep, and <laughs> we could see everyone just shuffling for position once more, everyone trying mm. to save fuel at the end of the race. So many variables, so many different classes. It's uh, it's, it's rarely a dull moment in this series, and uh, that's exactly where we like it, James.
Absolutely, I do fully agree with you. But there you go, guys. Thank you so much to everybody that has joined us throughout the evening. Thank you very much for jumping into the booth. If you are watching it back, don't forget like, subscribe, turn on the bell, so do all that other fancy jazz. But for now, guys, that's going to wrap it up from us later on on the JBB YouTube channel. As we just said, we have got some Gen 4s coming up from Motorsport, from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. So if you want to get yourselves involved in that one, you can. That comes goes live. Actually, it's a little bit early now because obviously the clocks have gone forward in the wonderful USA so that goes live at 10 to 1 in the morning not the 10 to 2 as it is advertised I will change that shortly but that's going to wrap it up from us up here in the booth I've been James Parfit I've been alongside Edward Hunter and I've had Tim and Klaus on production for us we're doing these cameras trying to keep up with all of this epic action but from all of us up here in the booth guys take care have a great week and you never know we might see you on the track sometime Good night. Down for the side. Have it. Oh, it. He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligna has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's still such up. He's such a second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Barry's gonna do it! Barry!